Yeah. All right. We are live. Hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, say that again. I must have a really bad mic. Yeah, I can I can hear you, but just because you're further away, it's it's a little bit more echoed. Videos, I like those. And, okay, never mind. Carry on. All right, so we are live. Yeah, hear me. Oh, but he knew you were talking. Yeah, he says he could barely hear me in the back. Yeah, but I I can hear you now. I can hear you talking. I enjoy the <laughs> short your videos, your short videos. Oh, great. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, we did them a little while ago, and uh, hopefully there's enough people getting them now. Oh, by the way, Catherine, if you're if you're listening to me through YouTube and oh. you're oh, you're not you're hearing me live. OK, good. Because if you're listening to, to YouTube at the same time, it'll be a delay and then it'll echo just so you're aware. Yeah, I, I keep hoping that uh, those uh, uh, the shorts would really uh, keep going and going and people would catch them. But people are catching them a little bit here and there. Uh, I get some comments on them once in a while. Um, I tried to jam as much as I could in every minute of them. <laughs> and um, I thought they were good, but it's it's still a lot for somebody to take in. <laughs> so with that, yeah. welcome, everybody. Anybody else that's uh, jumping in, feel free to jump in at any time. Jeremy's coming back in. And uh, anybody who's thinking about it or has questions or anything, feel free to jump in. And uh, we'll just kind of go along and share and any questions or comments or, you know, whatever it is. I know some people wanted to share. There's Roy. Uh, some people wanted to share on things going on um, that everybody's looking at for uh, April 8th. <clears throat> I think most of you know where I stand on it. Uh, sure, I believe it's a sign, uh, but like every other sign, I believe it's a sign. <clears throat> and for me, one of the things I believe about it is, you know, people have, have shown how not only is an X, but it looks like an A for like the Aleph. Um, for me, when I look at that, now I'm probably biased because of what happened in relation to Aleph um, for Taurus. But when I look at it, it I think it's telling that when I see it, I see two things. One, by it happening on April 1st, and that the other one happens on, I think, April, uh, October 2nd, I think that's showing us that the Hebrew calendar is in order, for one, because that's beginning of Nisan, and the other one is beginning of Tishri. So that's what I believe it's saying. For me, that's what I'm seeing. And the second thing I'm seeing is with the Aleph symbol that a lot of people are showing I believe that it's showing us that Taurus is the beginning. Hebrew calendar is in order and Taurus is the beginning. But as you guys know, I'm kind of biased for that. So um, we can take it with a grain of salt. But as you know, that's not the evidence we have here. Uh, we have the evidence of scripture, of harvests, of, of, of the sun, moon and stars where it was when the Lord gave the law or, or, or when the law was, was given uh, was when Taurus was the beginning, um, the creation story, the whole nine yards. But we can still go into it. We can talk about it. I know a lot of people want to share on it. I know there's a, there's a comet also going by in a meteor or something like that. Um, so those are obviously very intriguing as well. But we also know that there's the meteor shower that's coming August 12th, right on target, like right on the date that we're looking for, uh, that I've been putting out there. Um, and I was talking with, uh, we haven't we haven't heard from our brother Brian for a little while, and I had sent him a message maybe a couple months ago, just say, you know, I missed him, hopefully we'll hear from him again. And he reached out, and he's been uh, working on some things himself, and I don't want to say, say it, it's not a big deal, it, it's a good thing. And, um, but we were, um, what was it, we were sharing on some things, oh shoot, I just lost track. Um, what was I going to talk about? Oh, man, it was like right there. Um, 
we were talking on some things. What was it? Uh, August, August, August. Something about the meteor, the comet. Oh, I lost my train of thought, but I'm sure it'll come back. And but there's a lot of people that are that are looking at this. Um, oh, that's what it was. That, um, you know, for me, a, another big deal. And actually, it was something that I was emailing back and forth with um, uh, our brother Jake about, who's in the forum as well. And what it is is not only. I mean, it, it's very interesting. It might be something, but it might not. The fact that the ministry is, you know, six and a half and it'll be seven years in September. Um, but for me, one of the biggest things is how in the beginning, when the ministry started, as as all of this revelation started pouring out, that we were like all the other end time ministries. We were looking at every event as possible. I mean, every month, month after month, we believed that there was something there because we were looking at the timing of Israel in 70 years. and we continued to follow it. But what happened is we started to look at less events. So instead of every month there being a potential event, we started really honing in and scripture started revealing more. And we went from looking at everything to looking maybe to half a dozen things to looking to maybe four times in a year where it made sense to looking to three. And then in the last couple of years or year and a half, it was maybe two and then since last year, when the revelation, when these things came to be confirmed in Scripture with the understanding of the harvest that we understood, when it came to be understood with, um, you know, uh, uh, Jesus's birth, that's why you hear me often refer and go back and say, oh, you guys have heard this before with uh, Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9 was, was with not only Isaiah 9. But Isaiah 9 with Luke, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4. When, when Matthew chapter 4 finally revealed itself and it said that now John was in prison, that, that was, I, I was done at that point. I knew, just as it was with Enoch, even though we've understood it, Enoch, all these years, that it was that true Feast of Weeks. You know, when the time would pass, we would keep looking at these other possibilities because... We thought, well, that was then, and maybe there's something else. But from last year, when these things revealed themselves, and we were really looking at the true Feast of Weeks, and the day after it passed, and then we get Isaiah, and then we get Isaiah was revealed in Matthew 4, and then we get that it was when John was put in prison, and we knew that it was two months approximately after Jesus' birthday. That was it. We have at least a dozen, two dozen, I, I haven't counted, but there is so much evidence from scripture from history from from artifacts from the sun moon and stars that i was so excited that we now from last year didn't have to go event to event or even two events or three events and i thought that was going to free a whole bunch of us and that's something that brian and i were talking about i felt free when that was done once i knew the time frame, whether it's this year, next year, 10 years, 100 years, when I knew that it was going to be at the true feast of weeks, man, I just felt so much more at ease because I know for, there's two types of people really in prophecy, and those are the types that want it now. So, yes, everybody wants it to be now. And so, but they'll go from event to event to event to event to event. And some people, I get it, they need that. Some people feel they need to go from event to event to sustain them as they keep going through in their walk. But I was never really one of them because there's too many highs and lows. And it's a roller coaster of emotions that just gets really painful. And But I know for other people, it doesn't. But I never really wanted that. And I didn't want the roller coaster. And I know it caused grief in a roller coaster ride for some people. I just wanted the truth. I wanted the understanding in the revelation of the open books. And over time, that was exactly what happened. And so once last year came and we got the, 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 I would say like, quote unquote, the final pieces so that we could really understand this was the season, not that we understood everything, but that there was so much evidence pointing to it. I was like, now we can just breathe easy. We can, we can take a breath. We can do the things that need to get done in life that he has given us 
and we can minister, we can dig into his word, we can be diligent, we can be uplifting, do all the things that we're supposed to do without being on the edge of our seat, always telling family and friends, it's coming now, it's coming now. You said that last month, you said it the month before, you said it the year before, you said it 12 months, 13, 14 months ago, you know, and of course, nobody wants to hear it when you're always doing that. But if you've tracked the progression of how it's happened here, I, I thought it was a relief. And uh, some people didn't, and some people still don't. Um, they feel it means that we're not looking anymore. Um, that couldn't be further from the truth. We're now looking more into him, more diligently seeking the, the revelation of him that encompasses everything that's going to come. We're an end-time ministry. It's a ministry where the books have opened and we're revealing understanding of the end. Do we have it all? No, of course not. Do we have more than it has ever been revealed before? Absolutely. And so that's what we're building on. And why? Why is this building? Why, are, why does it continue to happen? What, what's taking place? What's, what's the purpose in all of this? Clearly, it's something. Clearly, it's something. Or don't you think it would have been revealed decades ago and everybody could have started really studying into the differences in the Gospels and, and really preparing all the churches around the world. That's what I always thought. I always thought, man, if they knew this, if they knew what's, what's being revealed here, I figured people would be writing books all over the place with all of these new revelations coming about, all of these prophecy teachers that knew there was more, and here we are, and we've got more, and we've got clarity. I thought they were going to be writing books left, right, and center. And uh, then, of course, <laughs> nobody really wanted to jump on it except the ones that the Spirit is leading. So what was the purpose? What is the purpose? And I believe there's a group of people being prepared. And I'm going to open that with this. It was an interesting share. Uh, meeting at, okay. it, was a, it was an interesting share. And... It was shared by our brother Roy. I would recommend you guys should go watch this. You can watch the whole thing. Prophetic word for 2024. It's this guy with a small group of subscribers, but he's got 20,000 views on this from two months ago. Uh, I'm not going to play it all, but it really has some details in it for us. And in fact, let me, uh, let me stop sharing my screen and do it again because I didn't click. Oh, does it make it? You guys are going to have to let me know if it. Oh, there we go. I'm going to share my sound. And we'll play uh, a few minutes of this. I find it very, very interesting. And I believe it connects to what we're talking about. So let's see what he has to say. For these days, these are serious times. And this is leading us to the return of our sovereign Jesus Christ. The last thing I want to leave you with is beware of unclean spirits. In these days of great deception, I began to pray, and I came to this final encounter that I'll explain to you. In this encounter, I begin to see devils, demonic princes, and they commissioned unclean spirits to seduce the saints out of their cleanliness and purity. Why were they seducing the saints? Because these are days of deception. What is being called holy is not actually holy. And the thing that is holy, it is being called evil. And so the commission of these unclean spirits were to make the saints defile themselves so that in the judgment places of heaven, the accuser would have a right to go into the heavenly places and accuse those saints of defilement, disqualification. Now, I want to share something with you. I'm going to jump in on this part because... Roy doesn't know, and nobody knows except for, uh, I think, Catherine, with a little bit that I said in a comment to her, that in my next video, 
I'm working on, it's going to be uh, Leviathan and Bohemoth. And of course, what what is it connected to? You know, we've spoken on these things a little bit in passing in relation to the Antichrist and the false prophet, right? The beast and the false prophet. We're going to be able to bring clarity and light to it. But the reason I'm pausing here for you is in, in the latter part of the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to share this little tidbit with you. We've all been told that Satan is the one who was cast down, correct? We, we've all been told in the churches Satan was cast down, and when he was cast out, you know, all this stuff is going on. Yet, we're also told, just as this guy said, that the accuser, who is who? Satan, right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, we know Revelation chapter 12 is the end of days. We've proven it. We've understood it. We know after his battle with Michael, he's going to be cast out, a third of the angels, all that other stuff. And what is he called? He's called the accuser. Okay? He's called the accuser, specifically Satan. Satan is the accuser, and he's accusing the brethren before God day and night. Wait a second. How is Satan in heaven before God accusing each of us day and night if he was cast down? Wait a second. Something's going on, right? Well, the answer is what we've been revealing for a while, which is Satan wasn't cast down. Not yet. We know when he's cast down. We know it's going to be at mid-trumpets. So who was cast down? Lucifer. Lucifer was the one who was cast down. He's the one that's always been here. He's the one causing the chaos. And he's getting that, if you will, his power, his authority, and so forth through Satan, who is kind of like his boss, right? Just like, why is he the anti-Christ? Why isn't he the anti-father, the anti-God? He's against Christ. And Satan is against the father. So they work as, as a team against each other, right? This is the evidence that Satan is still in heaven. So we've been told, oh, Satan's the one that's been cast down, and Satan is still the one in heaven accusing us day and night. Well, what is it? Was he cast down, or is he still in heaven accusing us day and night? He is in heaven accusing us day and night until he's cast down at the first woe, and they're screaming in praise and joy in heaven, and then saying, woe to the earth and to the sea and to all those that live in it. Because that's when we know he's, there's the final two and a half years of his time when, of course, Lucifer has his additional power and all these other things that will take place. So that's a, a little a little side thing that I wanted to share with you guys that, you know, we've talked on it in different ways. And in the next one, I'm really going to expose it and, and show these differences. But that was something I really wanted to share. Just even, even last night when it dawned on me, I was thinking, what? Wait a second. We've already kind of taught on it. But there it was right there. Is he accusing us day and night in heaven before God? Or was he cast down? The answer is, he is accusing us before God day and night. And it was Lucifer who was cast down. That's why we've all heard that in, in prophecy circles, you've heard people say that um, they would say Satan, right? That Satan is the Antichrist. And whoever this Antichrist character is going to be, is probably going to be somebody so beautiful, like a, a great looking guy. Well, is that because it's Satan? No, it's because it's Lucifer. It's going to be the incarnate. Whoever he is in is going to be Lucifer. It's not going to be Satan because Satan isn't cast down to mid trumpets. So very, very interesting. And, and a video was shared and it, it was it, it's really awesome when you're going to see how it all ties into the next video because the way... Lucifer was described you want to talk about a match uh, a, a copy of the opposite but trying to mimic Christ exactly at the time we know Christ is coming it's unbelievable so let's keep going with this there's a reason why I'm sharing this still this is very important because these are days of priesthood you're going to hear the message of priesthood the announcement of priesthood, the teachings of priesthood explode around the body of Christ. Hello. 
you're going to hear the exploding of the priesthood throughout the body of Christ. What has been happening here for the past two, three years? More and more and more about this priesthood. That's what I believe is happening here in maybe not fully, but in a big part with a number of us. There is an explosion of this understanding of this revelation of the priesthood. This first remnant group of workers. Are there others? Yeah, the 144 is a priestly line as well. So there are different portions of workers, as we know. And it's this priestly line at the beginning. And look what he's talking about. He's talking about 1 Peter. You go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Well, what do we know about 1 Peter? We've gone into 1 Peter 1, haven't we? Let's go real quick into 1 Peter chapter 1 and see who the Lord is talking to. We've gone into this, right? Those who are what? Peter, an apostle of Christ, to the strangers. The strangers are the Gentiles, right? The strangers are the foreign nations. This group of Gentiles being raised up in this priesthood, who are sanctified, who are going to receive an inheritance, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, which means in the end of days. So this, when I, as we've started to understand this over the last couple of years and, and really dig into it, my heart has really settled just like in the past year as to understanding the season and time and not be so on the edge of my seat, but always ready, always watching regardless. So if it does happen April 8th or around there, that's why I keep saying we'll be fine. If you're watching, you're praying, you're diligent. You're still aware of it. You'll be ready. But more than that is what we've talked about here with First Peter in chapter 1. He's got a group of people, a royal priesthood, that he is preparing and kept secret. Well, what kind of things would they have to know? Would it, would it be revelation about the end of days that they're being prepared for? <clears throat> of course. That's exactly what he was saying. And we see, you know, through the trial of your faith, being much more precious than fine gold that perishes, though it be tried by fire, unto the what? The appearing of Christ, which is that free trip for the, when he returns for the 40 days, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The only way that could happen is if we were, as I've said before in this, if we were in the presence of our Lord and Savior. So when we go to chapter 2, where he's talking about, and he's talking about a holy priesthood. Look at the connection to this priestly fraternity, which is what? Used only two times. This royal or holy priesthood is only used twice, and both places are in First Peter. This one in chapter, both of them in chapter two. It says, uh, da -da 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 -da, starting in verse uh, First Peter 2, verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient. Look at that, stumbling at the word. So there's a group of people stumbling at the word. Means they're still seeking it, right? But they're stumbling at it. Being obedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. There it is again, only used twice. A priestly fraternity of people, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you, listen to this, out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Now, what do we know about this? This is perfectly connected to the thing I just spoke about and what we've been talking about for a while now, well, for the last year, is this revelation of Isaiah 9. We know a light affliction happens in northern Israel, Haifa and Tel Aviv, that will begin the 50 days at the pre-trib escape. And then what? When he returns from the wedding, he is coming to the people that walked in darkness but have seen a great light. And when is it connected to? As we know, unto us a child is born, which last year, I believe, was saying that it was connected to his birth, like Luke in order, only to find out that in Matthew chapter 4, when this fulfilled was fulfilled, it wasn't actually at his birthday, but was about two months later. 
That was what we spoke about in the last video to bring that understanding of how are we off? How, how can there be this jump of two months? And then we find this account that when Jesus actually fulfilled it, it wasn't at his birth, but it was two months later. And we've got this, this portion of two months being made up by the in scripture being revealed by the timing of when Christ actually fulfilled it. it it's awesome. It, it's so incredible to be able to track these things, to be able to follow them and put them together. And it's a big reason why I wanted to share this clip. I'm going to show some more of it as well. Mm, be with strangers. All good stuff in here in 2 Peter 2. You guys can go and keep reading it. But just this, this great connection to precisely what he's talking about, which is why, you see, this is something that I do. I don't often like to share prophetic words or or people that have had these visitations and gone to heaven, but I've shared some every once in a while because it's something that at least I can understand to an extent in relation to the words being said through what has been revealed in scripture. So the fact that this guy is speaking these words like this, and we know that what he's speaking and he doesn't know us, and we understand that what he's speaking is something that's been happening and has been building and building and we've been preparing for and Petra's doing it over on her channel and preparing this remnant worker bride, this royal priesthood. It's awesome. Not just praying and fasting as we've known it, but the premier identity of the believer during these times will be that of the priest. And we've regulated priesthood to men, heads of households, so forth and so on. No. There is a reclaiming of the doctrine that Martin Luther gave us, and that is the priesthood of all believers. And God is emphasizing priesthood in this hour because priesthood is the legislative governing force of the kingdom of heaven. When God introduced himself to the children of Israel, he said, I will make you unto myself a kingdom of priests. Then in the book of Revelation, two times, there is this rejoicing and the proclamation is sounded. He has made us unto God a kingdom of priests. So what God introduced in Exodus he got the fruit of in Revelation. We, the church, are a kingdom of priests. God governs the spirit places through his church via priesthood. And so believers are going to take on the mantle of priesthood like never before. These ones, are going to be the ones God uses in this hour. And beware of unclean spirits, because these unclean spirits, their job is to seduce you out of your cleanliness, because that which is unclean cannot minister unto the Lord. Bam. How about that? A royal priesthood, a grouping of priests for this hour that the enemy is trying to prevent that the enemy is trying to bring things against to seduce them to come against them exact how many of you guys have seen that we've seen that where some have fallen haven't we i i've even seen it you guys know the recent story where i was looking to do something else on the side to try to bring in more income and i was trying to get all of that going and what was it doing it was pulling me away and i thought well maybe you know as i'm setting it up it's something that I, I don't have to pull away too much. I can spend maybe five, 10 hours a week doing. No, because why? Then your mind is divided. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 24 years old. And so for all that time and being an entrepreneur, you're always thinking about that thing. You're always in thought. So this is my calling and I knew it. And this is what I'm thinking about all the time. I'm always pondering on the Lord and in his word and in, in, in emails and phone calls and doing all this stuff. I'm always focused on the Lord and doing this. So what, what do you think that would have done? It was, it was the enemy. I, you, you, those, those, those arrows coming and trying to take that away. 
trying to take this calling, this this priestly calling away than I knew that I had. And so once I recognized it, I said, nope, that's it. I put a stop to it. I canceled everything, deleted everything and wiped it all away because I was able to recognize it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because, you know, sometimes you just you want it wasn't that I wanted more for myself is that, yeah, I would have liked to have provided more. But what I also really wanted to do was be able to provide more within the ministry, be able to provide more for Steve and for everything that they're doing out there, reaching thousands and thousands of people as well as those within the ministry that need help with bills or medication or whatever the case may be. It's like even um, Steve in this coming month, and he's going into the Congo from March 6th to the 9th, and they can't go over the water. I was just hearing this from Cindy. They can't go over the water because it's terrifying for them. People die all the time because there's hippos and crocs, and boats are getting tipped over, so they have to take a long route. There's four of them, and they're taking this long route to go around and they got the documentation to go into the Congo and they've got this stadium. I, I don't think it's a huge stadium, but there's a stadium where they're going in to do this preaching, which includes yes, number one salvation and preparing people for the end with the revelation and bringing the understanding to it. What do you, you know, Steve's doing this stuff every month. He always needs provision and it only comes from ministry reveal. So I wanted to do what I could and I thought, well, I'm doing this, Lord, with the right intention. You know, if I could do this, then it would help with more. But the enemy knew what he was trying to do, and the Lord wasn't going to have anything to do with it. So here we are, you know, always always putting out uh, uh, um, requests and prayers and everything else to be able to keep everything going and to keep reaching more people, right? And And I'll say this as a side note, since we're on this topic, is that uh, even GoFundMe. So GoFundMe, which is where some of the donations have come in over the years, they just put a, a hold on my account for transferring money to me. And you know what they requested? They requested, oh, can you prove to us that you're doing this? Can you give us receipts of all the books that he's buying? Can you give us receipts of his travel and everything? I was like, what on earth are you guys talking about? Since when do we have to prove to you with receipts and everything about the money that we're sending to to grow the kingdom and to grow, to do what we're doing, and that's what I responded. I res I responded like, here's one receipt, here's his channel where you could see, here's the books being printed that you can see on our website. But I'm not giving you all that details. Have you lost your mind? Who are you? So we're on hold until they do a review. So now, just so everybody knows, we have to do everything just through PayPal, and our our PayPal has a nine hundred ninety nine dollar per transaction, not that that happens often, but a per transaction limit in Canadian funds. So you can see, again, one thing gets taken care of and we try to deal with that. And then you've got another thing over here and the enemy's trying to slow it down. And it's happening all around. So when you see a video like this, I can speak on it from my end being involved in this on a, on a continuous daily basis that the arrows are coming from all sorts of different areas to try to slow, to try to stop, to try to deviate and push us away. We have to remain strong. And especially here, especially here when we know, when we can understand at least to, to an extent, having been here, most of you guys, for a little while, having seen the revelation and, and gone and searched it out for yourselves, you could see that this is really happening that there really is a preparation going on, that there really is a purpose to this revelation. You know, it reminds me, and I'll, I'll end it with this, and then uh, I'll bring in you guys for the questions and so forth. But, you know, it always reminds me of this. Uh, sorry, Luke 24. It's always with uh, a lot of highlights on one of the pages. It always takes forever to bring up. There we go. It always reminds me of this in Luke chapter 24, the, the prophetic picture of when Jesus returns and he's with the disciples and the 40 days have begun. And he's telling them in Luke 24, 44, and he said unto them, these are the words which I, which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, which is the first five books in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. 
this is what's coming. This is what we've taught on. This is what we know. We've we've understood this for a few years. And I remember before even, and I've, I've said this a couple of times over the years, even before making this public in Luke 24, 44, and having some understanding of it, I remember the first time it really caught my attention about four or so, maybe four and a half years ago, and saying to myself, oh my goodness, because we had understood the, the portion of the Psalms. We had started to understand uh, two, three, four of the prophets a little bit better. But in the law of Moses, back then, four or five years ago, we were barely just touching on the first five books of Scripture. We we had a little bit with, with uh, the days of Noah and, and Enoch and things like that. But that was kind of the extent of it. Look at what's happened. And, and before that happened, and I was, and this caught my attention, I, I said within myself, oh, my goodness. You know, here I was believing that it was the time, and we were talking, believing that it was the time and season back then. And I would read this, and I said, understanding what was happening, saying, oh, my goodness. We, we've got the Psalms for the most part. We barely touched the prophets, and we really don't have much from the, from the law of Moses yet. And I said, oh. And I was nervous because I thought, man, I don't really know the first five books very well at all. At all, four and a half, five years ago. Look at what's happened now. We have gone through those first five books. We've been going through the prophets, and these things continue to develop. But look at where it's come for those of you who have been around for a few years look at what has happened in relation to this verse the psalms the prophets and the law of moses i mean the last three to four years especially the last three years in relation to the law in the first five books in the torah that stuff has exploded <laughs> off the page in our understanding and the prophets have continued to explode because there's still so much more and then of course the psalms and so how fitting is it in a ministry that's being prepared, in a ministry where, where we know something is happening, and it's, and it's this preparation that's taking place? So if when the Lord returns after the wedding and he begins his 40 days, which is about two months from his birthday, what, what do you think he's coming to complete? The game plan, the, the strategy, the, the information that he's been preparing us with so that when he comes, he now completes the story. And our understanding has now been made full with the rest of it. How crazy is that? And this isn't something we've just recently understood. We've been tracking this and following this for four or five years in relation to seeing that verse come to fruition. And now here we are, having gone you know, year after year, understanding less of the window of where it is to now one focused time frame and within that focused time frame all the other little pieces point to it and show it and reveal it and so much so that it ties it all the way back to where it first started when the when the books opened in relation to the prophets with Hosea and Zechariah being 14 chapters in I think Aprilish of 2018 and when that happened and what did we see in chapter seven? The fifth and the seventh month. And for so long back then, we talked about the fifth and the seventh month. The 50 days that come before the 14 years. And what did it reveal in this past year with Isaiah and everything else? Exactly the fifth and the seventh month, fasting and mourning, the 50 days before the 14 years begin. I, it, it, this is why when it comes to the... The, the sign of what's coming in April, I witness it as a sign that the calendar is right, that we are on that calendar, and that we are to be prepared watching for everything that we begin from the count of Aleph. All right. That's my spiel. Who has, who has some questions? Who has some things that they want to share? Hello, my brother, Neil. Hi, Alan. Hi, everybody. And uh, yeah, kind of what you're going about is uh, the years we've been in this. And a lot of us started in 2017 with the Revelation 12 sign. And at that time, we all thought we were going. And through the years that have passed, we've, you know, 
picked different spots and thought we were going to go then too. And, but it wasn't until, you know, the last year, you know, when it was found that the Feast of Weeks is the true time. Mm -hmm. And I totally believe it and understand it, you know, with your teaching and look forward to every time you come up with something new. It's always awesome, amazing, you know, that you find it. And so I trust totally in what you've taught us. And that's who I, the people I talk to in the ministry here that, you know, stay faithful from what the Lord has taught us through scripture. That's you know, right. now what you see on YouTube, we saw the signs. We know there are other signs. And uh, the sign that's common with the big eclipse and people are seeing other alignments and seeing the Torah. I mean, not the Torah, the candlestick oh. lining up the seven mm -hmm. churches and all that stuff. Again, I believe, too, it's just another sign, you know, being prepared is what we're at right now. And that's yeah. my total focus right now is like and the repentance part of your life and day to day and the whole thing is the change that has to come within you okay. repentance is changing and if you're not changing the person you were when you started you know from the beginning you know and then my total focus and then you still have to deal with the family you have still have to go to work i still have to act as if mm -hmm. you know and uh they don't want to hear and it you know it saddens your heart you know but I still pray for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even those that, you know, I've seen illnesses from, I'm sure it's part of the the shots that were taken. And, you know, even my daughter recently with a gallbladder issue and had that operation, but she's taken every shot they've had, you know, it's like yeah. where she was working, it was kind of mandatory, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that's not the mark, you know, so mm -hmm. I have faith in that. But then uh, you got to trust in what the Lord's going to do for all of us and will do for them, too. That's right. You know? And uh, I believe, like you believe, too, that there's going to be more work for all of us in one way or another, whatever it might be. You know, it's still going to be revealed to mm -hmm. us. And uh, looking for the day, you know, got 166 days till. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We've got our countdown, pro. That's right. You know, and uh, it's coming on us pretty quickly. You know, mm -hmm. you look back and, you know, and just think ahead how fast that time really does go. And especially the older you get, like. <laughs> the faster you know, it goes, yeah. Five in January. And, uh, you know, I'm only at five years away from that 70. So, I, you know. And yeah with the Lord for a long time since childhood, you know, uh, growing up and, you know, everything that I've been through. And so That's right. just looking forward to more to be revealed to us with, you know, sticking with the channel and not giving up, seeing a lot of people come and go from ministry revealed, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, still pray for them too. Yeah. And, you know, talk to them, one of them once in a while, but That's right. still cutting heads, but, that's okay too. He, he, he did get the information. Yeah. And understands the 14 years, but yeah, you know, we do what we can do. And again, I want to thank you for everything that you do for us. Oh, I appreciate it. I guess that's about all. <laughs> no, you nailed it, brother. That's exactly it. Right. We still have yep. to keep living our life. We still have to keep watching and praying, uh, you know, work and, and everything else that's involved. Right. It yeah. just, just and it, it kind of goes back to this whole thing, right? Just because we are looking at that specific time frame as really being the time, it doesn't mean that if if we've completely missed something and this is the time coming up in April, hallelujah. It doesn't mean we're any less prepared. We're yeah. not trying to argue or 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 debate it all out with others. We just want right. to say, look, we'll we'll be ready. Every one of us should be ready regardless. And just not be upset if one comes and goes, whether it's April 8th that comes and goes, or even if this year came and went. Sure, there's that there's that moment of pity party, but the Lord's timing is perfect. And it's never been a thus saith the Lord to any given year. 
It's been we're diligently seeking. I believe it's been this year and it's been that year. I believe this year at the True Feast of Weeks more than any other time in human history. And first of all, we should all believe that because it is closer. But we've got way more biblical evidence, not only for the season, which I think the season of the True Feast of Weeks, I think that's a done deal personally to that scriptures yeah. revealed and that's that goes back to what you were saying that you know you're you're all in you're believing it you're seeing it you see and and it's not because of me i i might be the one revealing it right, but right. it's up to everybody else to go and seek it out for themselves and to understand it and see that what i'm saying is true and if they have questions they could email they could comment they can join us in the forum and you know that's the way people really come to understand it for themselves. I might bring it forward. I might reveal it, but it's them that the spirit opens the understanding to. And when they see it, they just can't unsee it. And right. when that happens, man, is it ever exciting? You know, it's yes. a lot it's, of it visual for me too. So when you come up with the charts and show the Shemitah years and the timelines and stuff like that, and, even to see the e-sword, the way you highlight. Now it's like when I watch the videos, I put the closed caption on. So even when you're reading scripture, I'm reading it too right along with you. It's easier to see, yeah. you know, that helps. Yeah. yeah, just stick in there, hang on, try to be a good student, getting ready yeah. to graduate. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The, the real teacher is coming and uh, he's going to finish the story for sure. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Hey. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> All right. How about Okay, let's go to this. You know, uh since since Neil just touched on it, you know, one of the things that Neil was saying that he liked as well, that helps, you know. I'm I'm very much like Neil. I'm a I'm a visual kind of person. And so I'm going to go to this. This is what, I don't know how far aside I could put. This is what our sister Tammy has put together. And a number of sisters uh, have been helping with this and giving some insight in it. And I want to make sure I've got it scrolled. Look at how it works. Pretty cool, right? So I know it's it's small right now. Um, but it will be once it's it's fully finalized, it'll be in a PDF. I'll, I'll blow it up a portion of it so you guys can see it. So you can see even down here, all of this stuff on the bottom scrolls up. And what she's done is she she left these lines here so that we can all see going right across. So you'll always know as you're scrolling after you've realized, OK, in the, the year count, you've got the Luke spirit, the first seven easy years, as we call it, Leia, older, winter wheat. We've got the uh, um, the first uh, six years. And then we've got in the 70th year. So the 70 years, we've got in the 70th year. Oh, that's what it was. The four and then the five. And in the 70th year, you've got the final 50 days of the 70th year. There's your 50 days. Starts with the escape of the bride. Then you've got the seven-day wedding. You've got the 40 days of the Son of Man. And you'll see these little pop-ups that come up. So you'll be able to see all the little notes in it. And as you scroll down, and you can go to Exodus, you can go to Leviticus, you can go to every scripture. She's got every book. I don't think we've got something for every book in it. But all of this is going to be a lot more detailed. And you'll have scriptures that connect to the time frame under which everything is found within those years. So it's it's really quite wild. And then you have uh, the three days after the 40 days. And what do we see in it? Well, of course, we have, we know the raven spirit goes out on the 30 days. We know Son of Man is the 40 days of the white horse rider. We have Jesus meeting with the apostles after the pre-trib. It's the wedding week, Son of Man. <clears throat> Let's see. You have the first attack. We have the Holy Ghost that comes in what we call Acts 2.0. We 
we've got then the seven years starting and when the seven years begin of seals before the seven years of trumpets. You've got the second, which is the red horse rider. It starts the about two and a half years. You've got the war that breaks out. Hey, There's your red horse rider. Hey, Sorry. Hey, when, when will this be available to us? This, uh, oh, hopefully within the next week or so. Hey, Alan. Nice. This is going to have to be in Excel format, not PDF format, or we won't be able to see all that little pop-ups and stuff. Yeah, she's, um, uh, Tammy understands how it would have to play out, but in the, in, in the Excel or in the, in the PDF format, it'll be available in Excel as well, but okay. Excel or uh, Google Sheets. And, oh, okay. and, and in the PDF format, the way it's going to be set up is it won't be a scroll. It'll just be where everything will be one sheet after another, after another, after another. So I think it might be, I don't know if, four or five sheets and then you could just you can either print them off and put them below each other and you can go and and line up this verse to what's going on here that verse to what's going on there but when you look at it through google sheets or this or pdf or, or um um i think it'll be google sheets only you'll be able to to scroll it so as you're trying to follow the bear and the leopard and world war three during this time and and the seven churches and then it goes in and you could track Genesis and, you know, where these chapters are in their years. And all of this is going to be available. So it'll really help a lot of people, you know, see the first about two and a half years, three and a half years. And the second half of Seals, which is the when he gets his 42 months to continue. First beast, second beast. I mean, everything, the the whole thing. So there's a couple little pieces that still have to be tweaked and adjusted. Uh, which is why it hasn't been uh, fully released yet. You can see the the time of trumpets, the woes, the the period of times that happen between it, and why you could see like there's a division here, right here, which seems to be like right in the middle of the woe, and there's a reason for it because we know it happens in the midst of a portion of a year compared to the two and a half years of the two witnesses from the fifth woe to the end of the sixth woe, uh, to the end of the, sorry, the fifth trumpet to the end of the sixth trumpet. All of these things. So they're all oh. lined up even to the Jubilee and the millennial reign and everything is there. It well, mixed up. many things are there. <laughs> what were you going to say, Tammy? Oh, I just noticed that was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> the, Me too. It was missing the woe. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a couple of little minor things. We can adjust mm -hmm. those later. That's okay. So you can see it with the Gentile bride. As we know, this first seven easy years, the group that's part of the pre-trib, we know it's the it's the Leia bride type, the winter wheat. They go to the third heaven. They're the the white, the Luke group, the the spirit filled in Christ. We can see so the seven years. Yeah, yeah. So on this, I see that as you hover over certain parts of it, parts uh, white pop out with more explanation. Yeah, uh, is that going to be for every little section? So, like, uh, you go go down to one of the sliding areas. Okay. So, and hover over that. Does it do that same thing for that? It does for certain ones, yeah. Oh, because I was hoping that it would have the uh, Bible verse that supports it. Yeah. So, so in some of them, like you see I'm here, not like you, Elaine. I can't remember. I can remember the basic storyline. But I can't tell you where in the Bible to go find it. Uh, yes. You know, I, I got the whole storyline down. I, I totally believe the chronological order. I can sit and explain it all. But if somebody says, prove it, then I have to go to the book. I have to look yeah. at the the years to the chapter to years. And I yeah. was hoping that in this, this would truly be the complete. Uh, this is where we could find that. Yeah, and and that's that's essentially what it's going to be. Like even if you click right here, so in mm -hmm. one of those spots, you'll be able to see, you know, um the Mark's gospel, you know, it'll talk about okay. the different verses that are in there, what the words mean, some of the definitions, but some of the places don't have anything. So there isn't a pop-up. But what ends okay. up happening is you're going to have the chapter where things are found. 
Okay. So you'll you'll be able to recognize. So if we go to you know Leviticus and it talks about what's taking place in twenty six, or where's where's uh, a good one? Okay. You know, like Judges. You know, we well, can go to the well, books of Judges, and so you can go put this together. That's a, that's amazing work right there. It really is, right? So here's the Psalms, right? So we're here at this time in Seals, and we know we go to the Psalms, and you can go to Psalms twenty two, Psalms twenty three, Psalms twenty four. So Psalms twenty four. We know is connected to the sixth year. See, we're in the seven years of seals. We go to the sixth year of seals. And if we want to know events connected in chapters to years, well, we know there's one. There's Ezekiel 39. And here it gives you the down low as to where the verses are and what it talks about. We can go also, as we were saying, in Psalms. And here we are still under the sixth seal. We go to Psalms 24. And then we get a breakdown of some of the verses within Psalms 24. You know, the fullness of the Gentiles and who can go up the mountain and all that stuff. So the verses are all there to the ones that are straightforward, like in the chapters to years, you know, the storyline of Daniel, like Daniel 25 and events taking place. Hosea, there's our chapters to years. So mm -hmm. by seeing it's there, you know, the, the time frame of where yeah. these things are yeah. taking well, place. That helps a lot right there. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why it's scrolls, different pages. Yeah. There would be printing of a few pages, but at least um, it's there. And if somebody, you know, if you download it online and you just at least you've got it um, uh, uh, on your computer, you can still go to this and refresh it for yourself and study for yourself with these things that are connected. So, like I said, here we are, the Red Horse Rider, first year of seals, which is in the 21 year picture, as it says here is the eighth year, but it's the first year of the 14. Red Horse Rider, second attack. But now look what happens. So you get some of the, the big overall details that we know here, but then this can scroll up. And once this scrolls and you're following, you can see everything under it. Once it scrolls out of the way, then it goes Genesis, every single book of the Bible, all the way to Revelation. Not that, like I said again, not that every book has every single you know not that there's something we have in every book but you'll be able to see that we've clearly covered a number of books and even in some of the books that maybe there's nothing right now we would be able to add stuff later on and so forth as we go through it more but all of these are so where are you going to make this available Egypt. at on the home page or um i think once it's available available like once it's fully ready we will uh we'll put it in the forum and then um, there, this is where you can see it nice and clear, see? So those are all the main things of the events. And then it goes into the all the books of scripture. Oh, yeah. So, so see, you can see, look at all of the different places that we've covered. It's pretty incredible. There's well, even I... places in these where we've covered. We just, it's just not done yet, right? So this is why, you know, I say a week, maybe it'll be two weeks. But, you know, there's so many things within all of these books, too that just haven't been implemented yet but when if, you see if this it all, is going to be on your website alan i could actually make this into a phone app into a what a phone app mobile phone app oh i don't what does that mean well if you've got this live on your website I, I might be able to look into making it into a mobile phone app where you can bring it up oh, on your mobile phone, phone app. Yeah, yeah yeah that that's interesting uh maybe you should connect with tammy because uh that's something she's been looking into as well she was thinking about making it an app. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So definitely you guys can uh, communicate either through the forum and then change info or whatever. And um, uh, yeah, you guys, I don't know how far along she is on it and all the details that she knows, but yeah, yeah, this it'll be, so it'll be available on the website for sure. It'll be available in the forum. It'll be available in Google sheets. It'll be available in PDF. You'll be able to print the PDF and if possible, uh, figuring all the details out, which I will leave in your hands in relation to um, uh, an app. Uh, that would be incredible to have an app for something like yeah, this, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I know also, that was part of Tommy's plan. So I, yeah. I don't know if you see my comment there in the forum, but uh, with your little picture of the, of the timeline, the di yes. picture one, I, I use that a lot in videos, and it's really helpful. People um, actually you know can see what's going on and they can get it in their mind and and i was just wondering if we could have a bit of an update with uh 
put at the very end there, those who are alive and remain, uh, the two, two abominations, and also Ben and David, the two messiahs, if so you could add those. in this, oh, can you see, did I, I don't think I clicked share, did I? No. Let me click share again. You're talking about this one, right? Yep, that's the one. So if you could have along the bottom here, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the bottom maybe have uh, Ben, uh, Ben Joseph and Ben David uh, across the bottom in their timelines when they are there. Somewhere in here, Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, at the very end, those who are alive and remain, so that they, they can see uh, that that verse that goes there at, at the last bit. Um, oh, okay. Dead rights first on that, and Send what me, was the other? uh, send me, uh, uh um, I, I do remember seeing something about it, but send me, I think you, you have my email, I think, but you can send me an email or send me, uh, uh, a direct message in the forum into Yeah. the points that you're talking about. Yeah, well, And it was I just can see those where it could those three things were the ones that came up the most was the uh, the alive and remain, um, and also the abominations. The the two abominations that would be good. Yeah, I'd be able to add them in here. Well, yeah, see, so as much as everybody thinks I have a great memory, I have a great memory with scripture. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so so it does help that, uh, you know, it's like my wife says, you know, I've said it before, my wife will say, you know, those people don't know you like I've known you for 20 something years. You don't remember what you did this afternoon. And yet you can close your eyes and go from Genesis to Revelation. She says, I know that it's something supernatural going on. Right. So, yeah, send me uh, I would still recommend you send me an email or or send me a little message with those. Because <clears throat> if Hey, that especially. looks really good. That looks really good. Thanks for doing that. Um, hey, I have to go. OK. I got um, get up early, but I do want to relay one thing that happened. Um, I, I run, I'm, I'm a member of a regular church here. It's a Protestant church, a Southern Baptist. And I was like you, how you you were just into the end time prophecy, the seven year Um, thing at the beginning until I saw you talking on interrupts 165 and I think it was shortly it was right around 2017 and um, so I was looking for a church at that time that was an end times prophecy church right Mm -hmm. and there's just nothing around here they Yeah. they, they don't talk about it Yeah. but I did find This church that I belong to now, they their their philosophy is is you can have your own views about end times uh, because everybody had such a broad view about it. So I run a uh, men's Bible study on Saturday morning. We don't talk about this. We don't, you know, they just they just don't. Anytime I've tried to present this, but but on one of the guys. Um, started talking about the um, the mid mid post mid I mean pre post mid or Yeah. pre mid and post and and I I saw it as an opportunity and I started talking so I was like well what if they're all right he's like what do you mean I said well you just said they all can prove that they're right and I took him into it and I showed him that and and I got him I said why don't you go look at it. He came back in less than a week and gave me the, uh, well, look, I looked at it and I, I don't believe any of it. Yeah. And he hadn't looked into, you could tell he hadn't looked into anything. The, the, I don't know why it is. I, I, I don't know why it is when I heard you talking to uh, Mike and you were just, you guys were just getting into at that time, the differences in the gospel. And I don't know if it was because I was new to the Bible myself at that time that I, it just it just struck me as like, well, I I didn't even I didn't even know there was differences. I thought the Bible was pretty steady, you know, and so I started listening to it. But I don't get why some of us are just so prone to believe it and, and understand it right away. Yeah. And people and some people are just absolutely. They don't want to even because, you know, I, who are you, Ray? You're not you're or who is this guy in Canada who's telling you this stuff? And and this guy, after I told him that, literally wanted to sit down with me and the pastors to discuss 
how I'm being led astray. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, look, you don't, you can't, you, this church allows us to all have our own ideas about yeah. the end of time. So if you want to discuss it, I'll discuss it. Yeah. But you know, you need to, you need to back off. So it's still very hostile. It no really matter is, how much it? stuff I'm sitting here looking at this chart you're getting ready to present to people, the overwhelming evidence, uh, how it explains everything. And they, they just all went around going, la, 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 la. I don't yeah. want to hear it. And that's exactly it. I, I don't get it. I don't get it anyway, but I yeah. appreciate you, brother. I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, I still sit and listen at work. I'm so glad Jimmy puts the, the videos on the regular page. Cause because the way he streams them, I can listen to them at work rather yeah. than I can't go to YouTube but, uh, with the government. Yeah. But I can listen to. So I still go back to the four basic ones and listen to those every now and then. So, yeah. No, I appreciate, I appreciate it, it, brother. Uh, how you like my latest one of my latest pictures, man? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I was seeing that. Is it a you're blocking some of it, but is it like a sunset? It's yeah, that's that's at my that's at my Instagram page. Uh, oh. I got thousands of them like that. And you've take did you take them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Nice. You got to so, share more of those in the forum then. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, it's not. It's it's Ray Band sixty four on Instagram. Oh okay, I'm not on Instagram, but uh, maybe. maybe you can share one or two once in a while for us. <laughs> okay, once in a while I will. I once in a while, you don't you, you don't have to make it a daily thing. It's okay. But, but uh, um, love all you brothers and sisters out there. You guys have a great night. Um, Uncle Sam will be calling me early in the morning, so I got to get going. Have a good day. Sounds good, brother. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye for now. Yeah, isn't yeah. uh, isn't that the story, right? We we hear that uh a lot. Uh, I it's incredible how much I get it. I uh, it was kind of like what I was saying in the beginning, you know, I when this first started and I was freaking out on a daily basis. Um, I I was telling my wife I, I thought that these people I I always think of one guy in particular. Um. Uh, and I forget his name right now, but this guy's coming out with a new book like every month. I mean, it's craziness. And I thought a guy like that, I would I would be able to start sharing with these guys and people would just start saying, oh, my goodness, finally, we can understand these things. And and there would be books by people going out everywhere. I thought it was going to change the prophecy shelves of of books and end time understanding and nothing. And that bothered me for a long time till about the last two years when I realized there's something else going on. When I realized as many as you, as many of you have, and what we were talking about earlier, there, this is a group being prepared. It's, it's the Luke 24, 44 that is being given the understanding in part in a big piece to be prepared with this playbook so that when he comes and completes it, he's not going to say to those he's given the playbook, okay, now the game's ready to start. Everybody go home. That just doesn't make any sense. He is preparing a group of people for a purpose. And uh, I, I fully, fully believe that that's what's going on here. And that's why not everybody wants to hear it. You know, and the other, I think one of the other reasons, too, is just as the final thought on it, is if they start to understand it, they have to change everything they thought they knew about prophecy. And so even if, we start with simple things of the differences in the Gospels, and maybe they catch one or two. They they even step back, and they don't want to hear it anymore, and they don't want to deal with it, because if they did within them, they know that, oh my goodness, I'm going to, how much learning is it going to take, right? All of this study and in-depth and all of these learning of all these things from somebody who's quote-unquote not qualified with any theologian theologian schooling or anything like that i get that all the time from church uh leaders oh well, who are you uh what's your what theologian school or school of theology all the, and you say i'm just a dude in his garage up in canada who's been you know <laughs> who just has understanding it's just come and they're like well who is that? it happens all the time and uh you know more and more proof uh, just like Ray said, and probably every one of you have experienced, it's it's a group of people being prepared. I had hoped and thought it would be more, and maybe it will be. Um, but we might be 
here's another thing. We might be a group within the group. We might be based on even like the Polycarp writings. We might be a group of those who receive the understanding of the greater group that doesn't, but is chosen to be a worker as well with their own purposes and things that they have to go do. So that might be another part of it as well, but definitely a preparation for a group of people. Absolutely. So Jana. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I love that chart. And I, I want to learn how to use it, but like I look at charts and my brain just kind of short circuits. Are you going to do any videos kind of like mm -hmm. explaining the chart for yeah. those of us who are, yeah, I, I need that. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was just a, uh, uh, put it out there to, to okay, let good. people know that it's coming. And once it's quote unquote finished, you know, to a point where we're happy with it, maybe we'll be able to add things to it, you know, other verses and stuff. But when the bulk of it is done um, with those verses and the chapters, especially, um, we'll put it out. I'll do a video on it. I'll have Tammy on with me. Uh, we'll go through it. And and hopefully when when I do a video on it, we'll be able to do it in a way where maybe what we can do is I can I can blow it up where just the first seven years show up. So I'll show the whole thing, but you see what happens. If I show the whole screen, everything's really small and it's hard to see it. So I'll explain the whole overview and then maybe break it down to the first seven easy years and go through some of the things in that and show how it works and then how people can just go to the chapter and read through it and, and pull where the understanding is and then go to the seven of seals and then show where those relate and then just make the next screen just seven of trumpets and uh, I think that'll be, I was just thinking about it uh, as we were talking, <clears throat> that that might be the best way to do it. And then everybody can always refer back to the video and see for themselves. I mean, once, once even in, say, the simplicity of printing it out in a PDF and you've got it all in PDF, it might be smaller to when you're seeing it all on one page. But when you do, you'll still be able to read it and you'll still see how all the rows follow below it. So all you got to do is say, okay, well, this is the seventh year that we're in prayerfully now. And we know there's 50 days in the final portion of that 70 in that seventh year. And we know this is what happens in the 50. And as, as you keep going down through the next pages, you'll be able to see where the chapters are that are there, where the verses are in them. So it won't be, it won't be hard to follow, but I will definitely uh, be doing a video and, you know, maybe I'll even tie in, um, the the uh, uh timeline chart the one page timeline chart maybe i'll tie that in as well and uh break it all down to an extent Thank you. I mean, that'd be great yeah maybe you don't need to fully break it down because you guys will get the picture but i'll go through each portion of it and uh make sure everybody gets it right on yeah. okay i'm going back into hiding <laughs> yeah. so yeah so thank you tammy for that and um like i said it will be available in the next uh week or two probably two um but that's all on tammy so uh you know thank you to tammy i know she's been working on this for a long time and she had it in excel and then because a lot of people don't have paid for excel uh google sheets is always through your email so she changed everything to google sheets and she had to learn how to use google sheets and and apply all these formulas to get it all done but uh, I'll tell you what, this, and, and she told me something that I've noticed, it happens to many people, that um, even when the Ministry Revealed book was, when I wrote it in 2020, I had um, uh, um, Trisha, who was doing proofreading, and Petra, who did the proofreading. Uh, Trisha, Trisha helped with uh, getting it finished on, um, on Amazon. Um, Petra proofread it. Some other people spent some time going through it with me as well. Jimmy was involved. And the people that did got a much better understanding. Things became more clear because now you're you're going into details and you're trying to make sure that what it's supposed to say, it says it that I'm trying to get across. And, and the more involved you are and the more you go into the details of it, the more you understand and the more clarity it is. And it just really blows your mind even more and more. And... Tammy was saying the same type of thing, you know, as she kept putting it together and building out all the layers, she used the book 
And then she went to the charts and some of the videos and she kept making notes and putting all this together. So when it comes to understanding, you could bet Tammy knows what she's talking about because of all the detail that she spent and all of the hours that she spent in putting this together. And not everybody understands it to the same level. And I get that. And not everybody has to. As a worker, the Lord will make the rest known. But the more we understand, the 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 greater depth, the more clarity, the closer and closer we're able to draw to him. So there's always going to be more. And uh, Tammy really showed that the there are people that are really, really getting the, the nitty gritty. And it's fascinating. When's Tammy putting out some videos? Because they might be an hour long instead of three. <laughs> oh come on now mark <laughs> well yours are going to be four now you'll be bragging about this chart oh no i i you know i even have a, a little note on my wall here that says you know two and a half hours because i don't i don't really want to go to three but you know i'm i'm just i'm human in the sense and what i mean by that is i always got to give my opening so that anybody who comes there's always new people that come across the ministry in every single video there's somebody new and if they watch that video without an understanding of the intros they're gonna say this guy's lost his mind doesn't know what he's talking about making stuff up so that's why i always have to talk about the intros but because i'm human and i want to share on things then i kind of go off here and go there so it always adds you know that 20 or 30 minutes or so <laughs> but i don't want to yeah. delete i don't want to get over that and i don't want you know, I know a lot of people skip over that, but sometimes in that is where there's tidbits of information that I don't go into in the video. So, you know, I know it it, go, it makes it go longer, but if you watch and you just make the YouTube speed 50% more, or if I talk slow enough for some people that they can go twice as fast and do it on double speed, three hours is an hour and a half. And you got five days between videos. So at five days between videos, somebody could watch half an hour a day and they, excuse me, and they'd be fine. So, you know, that's that's my other uh, piece of it, that if I do a teaching and the next thing and the part connected to it, I could keep it out and make it for the next video and let it be like a continuation of the previous one. Well, do you know what happens when people do that? Like, uh, I used to see that on Pastor Sandy. I haven't watched that guy in years <laughs> for obvious reasons, but he used to do videos and when he did whole videos, he would get a bunch of views. And when he split up a video into, I think, three or four parts and called it part one, like part one, part two, part three, part four, by part, even at part two, the views were less than half. By part three, he had maybe a couple hundred. By part four, almost nobody was watching. And that's why I do it. That's why I don't break them up into parts. I put it all in one video. It's all in one place. And then people can watch at their own time. You've got five days in between. It's no big deal. It gives you plenty of time. And for those that watch it all in order, I mean, all at once, they could soak in some of it, but there's so much detail, they can go back, then they could start making their notes. So there, there's a method and, and a reason to my madness that seems like a big video. And I know it might turn some people off to say, oh man, a three hour video, oh, I'm just gonna click past that. Well, guess what? I think that's actually, Probably... uh, I think that's actually uh, uh, Holy Spirit doing that on purpose. Uh, exactly. <laughs> That's the other thing yeah. I've come to believe too, that if it's meant for them, they'll get it. They'll they'll be led. The spirit will lead them. It'll 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 be made known to them. They'll they might see that hey, it's three hours, but this topic looks really interesting, and they click on it, and then they hear about the intros, so that they say, well, maybe I'll pause on this because he's really saying, you know, to really grasp what's going on, I should I should study some of that intro, and then they go to the intro, and then they start catching up on these things. So. You know, I, I believe that, too, that it's uh, Holy Spirit. Because here's the other thing. I've tried. I've tried to go back to, like, two hours and, and maybe really try to stick to two and a half. And two and a half, not that it's bad, you know, but that two and a half to three-hour window. And um, I've tried to even go less. And I there, there's so much because we can cover so much detail. And a lot of people might say, oh, well, there's so much repetition. You can You can not put that part in this video because you you discussed it already and we understand it in these parts. Yeah, except that it's connected to this part again, but it's coming at it from another angle for this other piece being added. And repetition is the key to understanding. You know, it, it applies to absolutely everything. So, you know, you look at the best athletes and the best business people and the best everything. 
it doesn't matter what it is. They're redoing the same things over and over and over and over. And they've they've gotten so good at them, they could do it in their sleep and they know it like the back of their hand. Exactly. That, that's yeah, what we should be able to true. do. We should really be able to understand it, right? I'll, and so, I'll just say about your, when you're watching those videos on your thing there, you've got yours on high speed. You and Mike do that. You watch your videos on high speed, but uh, the average person doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I was because we used to freak out when we watched Mike put his videos on, he'd have them on times two or whatever, even yeah. faster. Um, but when we're watching your video in high speed and you've got your video on high speed, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to actually stop and go back. <laughs> <'Cause>, That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I made note of that too. You'll notice what I did tonight. So tonight when I played that clip, I had it at, I think 0.5 or something like that. But when I knew I was going to be sharing it in this, I slowed it down back to normal speed. And the reason I did that is because this will be live and then people can rewatch it. And when they rewatch it, if they're watching at fast speed, then that's going to be double speed, yeah, right? So, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've consciously made myself a little note of that. Hopefully I always remember, but yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, and I appreciate what you're doing too, Mark. You see, I, this is something I was thinking about the other day. <laughs> that when when I was thinking, you know, I was pondering just when it got started and and, you know, how things have progressed. And how it was never about me. I might be the place where through the revelation is coming, but look what's come from it. Thousands of people around the world, probably tens of thousands to one extent or another have some understanding of it or growing in the understanding of it outside of a core, several hundred that really know it well. And from that, other ministries have been started. Yours, Mark, you've started doing some teachings and some videos. We've got Petra. We've got what Tammy and the group of ladies are doing. We've got other Bible studies, studies. I know that there's a group of elderly women that have been doing Bible studies for years from Ministry Revealed videos, and then they do a Bible study. And I think it's like a handful of women in their 80s, probably all in their 80s now. We've got um, what Ivan was asked to do, and Ivan is sharing now in a Bible study. And we've got all of these little pockets of things and of people that have now stepped up in, in their own way, in their own ways of doing it and sharing little bits here and trying to help others grow an understanding of it. And does it get everybody's attention? Even like Ivan, you know, he's doing the, the Bible studies in the prophecy teachings. And out of about 10 people, there's, you know, maybe half or so that aren't quite really getting it, not real a lot of interest. Then there's a some maybe three that are kind of getting some of it. And he said, then there's one or two that are just bang, they're in it. And they're like, wow, this is, and you know, and they're really taking off. That's, that's how it works. Right. And so we're seeing this happen. And then we got um, Steve over in Uganda and his team and how everything has exploded over there where there's thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people that are being reached, not only with the, the uh, uh, salvation, which is always number one, but he teaches salvation, first of all, properly. And then he goes on to teach on what it means and how to live it. And then includes the preparation to, to be ready and to be prepared, what it means, how we can better understand scripture and how it relates to this age that we're in and how everything's about to begin. Whether it's this year, next year, 10, 20, whatever it is, that the, the understanding of these scriptures that have been mysteries are now being revealed. And now there's thousands of people over there that are understanding it too. And that are sharing it with hundreds more and and their families and so forth. I mean, it's it, it, in a million years, I wouldn't have thought 10 years ago, if it's been almost seven, even seven years ago, if you had told me that this is what I was doing and this is what would come from it, not not ever in a hundred lifetimes would I have thought this is what I was doing and that this would be the result. So as much as I would have loved, you know, people writing books and everybody coming to understand it and everything else. I, I I couldn't be more pleased. I couldn't be more excited with the people that the spirit has led here, that, that their understanding has been opened. I mean, I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, you know, I see what's happening. I get the, the relays and the details and the phone calls and the emails and, and I, I wouldn't change it for anything. And now that I understand better that, that it's a group being prepared and not everybody it's it's helped settle my heart as well so i thank you for what you're doing too mark i appreciate it
Yeah, amen, and thank you, Alan. Thanks, mate. So, who here wanted to get into into the April eighth? I I saw a bunch of comments. People were going to come on, and they were excited. Yeah, let's talk about the April eighth, but I don't really have yeah, much yeah. on it. You know, I wanted I was <laughs> yeah. open people that that were looking to this April eighth stuff. We're we're going to be jumping on. Yeah, brother, brother Michael put a little picture there with a, a big four on fire and a um, yes, and the moon. Yeah, and that, that was pretty cool. I I actually changed a couple of my um channels to that symbol there just to uh put it out there to get people to take notice for forty days till the uh Hebrew um calendar starts, the beginning and the end. And uh, yeah, that would be a good uh, part to focus on the beginning and the end because I got that um where where you've got your tissue and all that and i showed taurus at the beginning and uh the sheep at the end you know so um with your with your months with the 12 months yeah. and uh yeah and people can start to see the beginning and the end i am the beginning and the end uh, on that sort of thing and are the you, start of their calendar and are you talking about um what uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh um shoot um Give me a second here. I'm going to see if I could bring it up. I'm going to bring up the uh, the forum. And there's our brother Steve getting ready for a teaching. Um, <clears throat> let me just find it. <laughs> this was fun, eh? Was that you? Yeah, that was you. Fourteen seven one seven. Uh, oh, that's what it was with uh, Michael Kennedy had posted it. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's the one, the big four and the zero. So anybody that's uh, that might be new or that's watching, this is the Ministry Revealed forum. Anybody can join it for free. Um, just go to ministryrevealed.com, click on the menu, and you can come and join. There's about twelve hundred people worldwide. Yeah, and I recommend to everybody out there that blue letter Bible that we've just seen there before. Yeah, it's um great, great little uh, helpful uh, website. We've got all the tools there, and you can look at individual words and compare other Bibles mm -hmm. um, to help you. There you go. That's one. That's one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah this this is uh, so it, he was to say like forty days to April eighth, right? <laughs> And yeah, the beginning of the this... Hebrew calendar year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I agree, man. There's some significance uh, to it. And, you know, I've I've made the point, uh, I made my point, but I was, I was wondering if uh, others also wanted to make their point on, you know, what they might, excuse me, what they might be expecting, you know, um, just just because I've made my point and and my stance on what I believe and to an extent can 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 discern and prove with scripture, but it doesn't mean that it yeah, it's it's an absolute. So what does somebody have that they want to bring to say, hey, here's what other details are that are going on with September eighth? And so I was hoping there was going to be some people jump on. Um, I know I had seen some comments in the forum about it, but uh, I don't know that we have anybody jumping on that's uh, that's looking to it. You know, I have a question about sure. that. Sure. Um, so I know there's going to be the eclipse, right? And then I heard about a comet. Now, is the idea that when when the eclipse, that when the, everything goes dark, then the comet will be visible? Is that the idea? Does anybody know? I did hear about that too. Um, I think um, I think I personally heard it from MBB, Mr. MBB three 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 or whatever it is. Um, that there was a a comet. I think the tail at the at that point was about five million miles long or something. They were saying, and that when the eclipse happens, it'll be close enough. I I think depending you know to the left, we'd be able to see uh, that comet. So you know there's okay. You know, there are things that that, you know, undoubtedly seem very significant as signs. But this is this has always been my issue 
since uh, since 2017. One is they're generally signs, right? So a sign isn't generally the event of something happening. But the other thing is that I don't I have never really found anybody that really, really understands these things. You know, you know, what what does it mean with this eclipse and what what are we connecting it to scripturally? And most people would say, oh, the 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 sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. And that's the sign. Well, you know that those happen kind of every year, right, to some extent or one extent or the other. So what is it that we're looking for in connection to it? What, what are we to understand from that one over this one? And that's that's where when it comes to the the sun, moon and stars that I always say I always fall short on because I don't really understand how to discern these different things with the sun, moon and stars. Have I understood Aleph? Have I understood what I believe I am to understand from it, from that one thing with the Holy Ghost? I, I, I'm absolutely 100 percent sure I have. But what do all of these other things mean around all of these constellations? Well, we know to extent there they relate to the tribes and and there's meaning in portions of time. But within trying to understand the constellations and and their portions of time and what's being said based on what's happening in them and where it's happening and the timing of when it's happening, what happens is what most people do is the same thing that most people do when it comes to scripture in tribulation. They see any, in a, in a pre-trib scenario, they see anything that relates to the coming of the Lord or relates to pre-trib or, rela or, or relates to vanishing or escaping or, or getting new bodies. They stick all of it in their perspective. So it's like every single one of these scriptures relate to this at the beginning pre-trib. But we know that that's not true. We know some is relating to pre, some is relating to this 40 days starting, some is relating to the end of seals, some is relating to the end of trumpets. You see, we're, that's that's why the revelation of the Gospels is so important. We can discern these different portions where Scripture tells us pre, mid, and post, and everybody can go to it and prove it, like Ray was saying. And then you, we can now discern where these different separations are. Once it begins, you better believe we've got a pretty good understanding of how it plays out. But... Everybody or most will go to the scriptures and put all of them into one basket and say, no, all of that relates to pre. I mean, they go to Matthew and we were no different. I was no different. I used to be the same and go to Matthew and you'd read at the coming of the Lord and think that was pre-trib. I mean, all you had to do is re read the verse at the beginning immediately after the tribulation of those days. So clearly it wasn't a pre and it was a post. And the people that said that that was post, they were the ones that were accurate. But then they believed only in post because that's what Matthew is showing, that it's post. Those people were right, except now they've missed mid and pre. That can be discerned through other places. And that's what happens with the sun, moon, and stars. So people understand that there's understanding in the sun, moon, and stars. And when something happens, regardless of where it happens or the timing of when it happens, it, it means pre. Or it means it's going to be this or it means it's going to be that. And things can happen throughout the year. And then they would say, well, that one's relating to pre. And no, it's got to be in the in the in the cancer. And and that's the sheepfold. And and that's where it's going to be. And yet it happens year after year after year. You see, just like when I talk about the wheat harvests, we know there's the winter wheat Leah that goes first. We know the Rachel is the spring wheat that goes later, but they happen every year. It doesn't mean the pre-trib Leah is going first this year and then you know at the fall feast then uh rachel is ready and then it's going to be rachel's time for the following passover no we know that's going to be six more years even though the harvest happen every single year and the sun moon go through the constellations every single year it doesn't mean you can always point to those and say oh there it is there it is there it is there it is and then point to this one and say there it is there it is and one is pointing to the crab and and another one is pointing to Aries. And you see, because they their understanding of these things is no different than the confusion they still have when it goes to Scripture. And that's why when it comes to listening to people, quote unquote, teaching on the sun, moon and stars, I'm very, very cautious. And it, it's no different 
than when it comes to, you know, uh, dreams and visions and, you know, prophetic words and all that stuff. I'm cautious to those that I first will listen to. And if I listen to it and I don't understand, I'm not, I'm not sharing it with anybody. But if I can glean understanding in it, then I share it with you guys. And so why do I do it? Well, because of the gleaning of understanding that we know from Scripture. And that I know all of the people that I share, if not if not all of them, very just about everyone, I know doesn't know who we are. And so it's not like they took some stuff and understanding that we had and then went and made a video of it and said they had a dream. You know, and like this guy I shared tonight, same thing. This guy doesn't know who we are. And here it was talking about this priestly line and the priestly time that's coming and it'll continue to build and to grow and to become more recognized. That guy doesn't know what we've been teaching. That's exactly what's going on. And, and we're in the midst of it happening. And here he was giving a word on it. That's why I shared it. So when it comes to these guys with the sun, moon, and stars, I'm, I'm not against it. I just don't have enough understanding, even with scripture, to be able to say, okay, I, that, that's making sense. You know, okay, that's making sense there. And it was the same with Revelation 12. You know, Scotty ends up taking a lot of heat and then, kind of went away for a bit and then goes on these different teachings now. But I believe that Scotty Clark did what he was supposed to do. Did I believe it for the first few years like everybody else? No. But we didn't rip on the guy. We just thought either he was wrong or that it was a sign. And now here we are coming up to seven years. And lo and behold, we know 21 years. So was it that Scotty was wrong? No, that was probably what? A sign, a marker of something significant. But the actual event of that, as we've taught on, will be something that will appear. The word appear means, as we've taught on many times, isn't mean, it means non-mechanical. It won't be casual, passive observation. It said it will be looking at something in awe and in amazement, which is the complete opposite. Like, you're going to see something there and people will go, oh, what? Well, that's not what Revelation 12 was. You couldn't even see it. People would say, well, if you wait before sunrise and you go before after, just after sunset, you'll see the start of it and you'd be able to see the end of it. And people would be like, what? Right? So was it the event? No. But was it a marker? Was it a sign? I absolutely believe it was a sign. And when you know the revelation of 21 to the 22 years, but the 777, now it becomes even more significant because we've understood the revelation all the way from not only Luke, Mark, Matthew and, and the Leah, Rachel story with Jacob and the year count. We can take it all the way back to the creation and prove out that revelation from scripture. So we've got the 777, the seven years of preparing. Well, lo and behold, we've got Revelation 12 now. That's going to be a seven year marker. How fitting is that, that the 14 years begins at the Feast of Trumpets, leaving seven and seven more to go? So how fitting that there was a marker for it. Well, check this out. Somebody else had sent, I, I don't know if somebody had first asked me or if I had discerned it on my, on my own, but then I never shared on it. And then Petra sent me the same thing. And that's this. If we're looking at these things, as signs and i believe the revelation as revelation 12 was a sign i believe this is probably a sign as well and out of all the signs since the revelation 12 timing to this one there hasn't been as much buzz about any other one now revelation 12 was bigger than the one that's happening now but the one that's happening now is bigger than any other one that happened since revelation 12 sign and how long is it? Six and a half years. What do we know happens in six and a half years once tribulation starts? Huh. Now it gets interesting, right? If we take Revelation 12, 1 and what happened in September of 2017, and it was the seven-year sign of the first seven years, and here we are coming to the tail end with when that sign comes, there's about six months left to go before the 14 years start. And that's a sign. What do we know happens 
in six and a half years that would lead to the seven years complete to the time of the rapture of what this sign could be. Don't we know something happens in the six and a half years after tribulation starts? We know that the Lord returns after six years of seals on heavenly Mount Zion. We know why Mark's discourse says that it will be as a day and hour no one knows. Excuse me, there's a reason why Luke's doesn't say it. We know why, because it's 50 days before. But in Mark's, which we know is six years of seals, and then he comes and fulfills that seventh year here on heavenly Mount Zion, we know it's the day and hour no one knows. So this is another reason why when we see the fifth and the seventh month that we were talking about earlier, and why I was excited that we can understand that difference of two months from Jesus' birth to when he would begin at 40 is exactly the 40-day beginning count from the 50 days of the 9th of Av to the year's end of Elul 29, and then bang, the day and hour no one knows, knows starts the 14 years, which six years later, which would be Mark's discourse to the day and hour no one knows, there's the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion, on the day and hour, no one knows. So there's six years, and what do we know happens? It'll be the time of the great multitude rapture, but they don't know when they're going. Just like Mark's gospel tells us at the time just before the transfiguration, that some of you won't taste of death till you shall have seen, everything's past tense, the Son of Man coming with power and glory. So they will have seen him come, but they don't get to go right away. Only Luke, uh, Only Mark's is the one that speaks like that. Because what happens? We know that even though when he's coming at the Feast of Trumpets after six years, we know that the great multitude rapture, who is the Rachel typology there, which is the spring wheat, isn't going right away. It can't be observed until next year what? Nissan. Next year, month one. So what ends up happening? It's what? About six and a half months later or about six months later, maybe seven, right? That's six to seven months. Is it possible that what this sign is in seeing what? Well, what do we know happens? The sun will be darkened. The moon turned to blood. We may not have the moon turned to blood. We've got the sun will be darkened. We've got this, this comet or whatever it is, this comet coming by right at that time that they're going to see. What do we know happens? They will have seen the Son of Man coming on heavenly Mount Zion, but they won't get to go right away. And it'll be about six months later before the great multitude rapture is brought in. And that would be what? Nissan. Is it possible that the sign that Revelation 12 was, which was the precursor of the whole seven years, the seven easy years in preparing, was that precursor to see and to understand that this is what's coming? Could that be, could this be, I mean, what we're seeing here in April, be a sign to the mid-trib time of the great multitude rapture. Aha. That might be a possibility too. Because it's a sign. That's my so other thinking on Zion, it. Are you saying Zion comes down before the multitude leaves? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, we I could see that. Yeah, yeah, Here, your, little chart doesn't, your little picture chart doesn't show that, does it? Uh, I think so. Oh, I just don't show Zion coming down. I just show them on Mount Zion. Well, you don't show where it shows up. Yeah, I don't show. You know what? Maybe you can make that in your note. <laughs> just send me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Do the one too, Al. <laughs> yeah, because that's something we could definitely, you know, throw somewhere kind of in here. Maybe right up here I might be able to fit it. But, you we'll know, see. that's that's exactly what happens, right? So if we go to, like, even that part I was talking about in Mark, we go to Mark chapter 1, verse 1, I mean, chapter 9, verse 1, and it says, And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So this is the only one where it's a past tense, where they will have seen it first, but they're not going yet. That's, why, that's what it's telling you. They will have seen it, which means they've seen it come, and they're like, are we going? What, well, what's happening? You see, and then we've got, of course, after six days, which is the picture of after six years of seals, the days to years and the prophetic understanding. We go to Revelation chapter six. And that why does it relate to Mark? Because Mark's is the time of seals. 
And when we come to the end of the sixth seal, or when we come to the sixth seal, we see uh, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Well, how about that? So there the sun is becoming dark. April is becoming dark. It's what? Six and a half years from the Revelation 12 sign, which is a warning. And six and a half years later, we got this sign. And what do we know happens six and a half years later from the beginning of tribulation? Well, what happens at the end of six years is the Lord coming right here. This is the Lord coming down on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of six years. And he's coming on the day now where no one knows, which is why Mark's discourse in chapter 13, when it talks about the coming of the Son of Man, when he's coming in the clouds, which we see happening right here, it then goes on to talk about the day and hour no one knows. We know that that's the Feast of Trumpets, and it just so happens that the tribulation of the 14 years starts on the Feast of Trumpets. And so when you get to the sixth seal, it's the end of the sixth seal, the end of the sixth year. They're seeing the Lord coming down, but the rapture of the great mid-trib multitude doesn't happen right away because they will have seen him come. But we know because they are the Rachel type, the, the spring wheat, that his harvest time is in the fall, but it's not usable or observed until the second day of Passover. And then we see there's the 144 sealed. And then you've got the great multitude rapture coming in. It's a picture of them coming in at the Passover time in the middle of the seventh year of seals, which is what? About six and a half years later. So if you take Revelation chapter 12 in September of 2017, and we go seven years to 2024, and if that is our seven years for which the 50 days come first, and then you've got six and a half years later, which is the time of the great multitude rapture, and we do a six and a half year count as a sign from Revelation 12, and we go to what's coming in April, is that really just as Revelation 12 was the seven year sign? Is this the seven year sign at Nisan to what happens six and a half years later after the after the tribulation starts, which is exactly six and a half years later from the Revelation 12 sign. I think that's that's quite probable as well. Not only is it giving us, I believe, an indicator because there is another eclipse on October 2nd. Which, so Nisan 1 and September 1, uh, um, Nisan 1 and Tishri 1, I believe it's it's letting us know the the Hebrew calendar is on track. And the fact that there's an Aleph, I believe, was a sign for us telling us that our, our understanding from Taurus is the beginning. So not only do I believe it's that, but it may very well also be the sign for the timing of the great multitude rapture six and a half years later from the start of tribulation, just as Revelation 12 to this sign is six and a half years later from when tribulation starts. So there's another piece of it to contemplate. <laughs> another reason why I say sign, right? No, nothing never happens when it's when it's a sign. It's always telling you of something coming. Anybody else? Anybody else? You can share on anything. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, April 8th. You can go into anything. Yeah, black black swans in chat there. You want to say hello to black swan? Sorry, say that again. Black Swan, he's in the in the chat section there. You can say say hello to Black Swan. Oh, Give Black Swan's shout. in there. Hello, my brother Black Swan. Um, his name is. Give me a second. I've just recently met him. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. I've got his name. I'm guess what? I'm meeting him tomorrow. Uh, Shane. Awesome. There we go. Our brother Shane from Black Swan. Yeah, we're meeting. Um, uh, he actually he used to live in the same community as me. And uh, just moved out to uh, another town, uh, just I think maybe 15, 20 minutes away to the west of me. And he comes into Calgary, into my community for his work. And um, so tomorrow morning, after I drive my wife to work, we're going to be going to meet for uh, coffee. Um, he, he went through uh, the intro series. You know, I had let him know before we do a, a show together, I want to make sure he he understands uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't fall over in shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, it, it's one thing to to have a brother that's close and, uh, you know, to be able to meet and, and chat about things. But, uh, you know, definitely had to watch that intro series. So it's not a sticker shock when uh, when we start doing a live show. So he has watched them. He is uh, he's been saying, wow, and mind bender and everything else. Right. Trying to grasp some of this stuff. So I said, well, before we do uh, a live show together, uh, you know, let's meet up. So he's free. We're going to grab coffee tomorrow morning at nine. Probably <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to uh, let it go too far, but I'm sure he's going to have some questions. And then we'll kind of get an idea of what he wants to go into and how he wants me to share. And uh, next Monday. So next Monday would be my video day, um, but it won't be because I'm going to be doing a live show with them. So the the stuff that I was talking about earlier tonight about doing uh, the, the behemoth and Leviathan with Satan's portion as well um, won't be next Monday uh, because I'm going to do that live show over on Black Swan channel um, with Shane. And so, yeah, that's what's happening. So uh, I'm, I'm in, brother. We'll, we'll do that uh, live show, but uh, we'll first see uh, uh, how you feel about uh, about everything you're starting to come to understand. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Perfect. Thanks for letting me know, Mark. Very good. All right. What hey. you got, Catherine? Okay. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for the information you provide to me regarding that Satan, Lucifer, the beast, all that, the Antichrist, that kind of stuff. But I'm still mixed up with devil, beast, and any other other names that associate with Lucifer and Satan. The dragon, that was the one, the dragon. I, I, I'm trying to study this, and I'm not being very successful with it. Um. Well, I think in, in the next video, well, when I get that next video out, I may not wait another five days after the live show because generally I don't like to wait too long when I've got some good details going on. But, you know, here's here's a just a very straightforward, easy way to understand those differences is we see it right here in Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon, so Satan's the dragon, um, was cast out, that old serpent, so he's also the serpent, who's called the devil and Satan. So he's also called the devil and he's called Satan. So he's the great dragon. He's the old serpent called devil and Satan. So those are all his name. He's also, in verse 10, he's also the accuser. Okay? So specifically Satan. So, an oh, we can't have that color. There are certain colors for these guys. <laughs> if I can get that screen out of my way. So, obviously, he, of course, has many names as well. But the one thing he isn't is Lucifer. It's impossible for him to be Lucifer because Lucifer is the one who's cast down, and clearly, the devil, Satan, hasn't been cast down. And a lot of people, when it comes to uh, churches, they might go to this verse, and they say, see, there was this battle with Michael, and Satan was cast down. No, he wasn't. This is prophecy. This is entirely prophecy. We got to remember even this. It, it's, it's a prophetic book that was written, what, 90 AD. They didn't need more information about Christ and, and his birth and his resurrection and all that in relation to what was already written and everything that they had. This is, he was given, uh, John was given this in 90 AD. And let's just have a read to, to all of this portion. In Revelation 12, 9, it says, and the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. What do we know about when he's cast out? He knows he has but a short time. So if Satan was cast out all the way back to when the scripture tells us actually Lucifer was cast out, was cast out does that sound like he's got a short time? Or does it sound like he's had like 6,000, 14,000, you know, 13,000 or so years? You see, it's a short time that he has. And we'll read that here in a minute. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God <laughs> and the power of his Christ for the accuser, Satan, of our brethren is cast down. Well, guess what? 
if he's accusing the brethren, when did the brethren begin? Seals. I mean, uh, um, after Christ. Which means if Satan was supposed to be cast down all the way back in the beginning of Scripture, and he's still accusing the brethren, which is the, the last 2,000 years since Christ, how is the accuser accusing the brethren, the brothers and sisters in Christ, before God day and night? It's impossible. It's because Lucifer was cast down. So now at this point, we know that this is the time of mid-trumpets. And look at what happens. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Well, there's again more proof that Satan is still in heaven accusing us day and night before God because it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. There was no blood of the Lamb until 2,000 years ago. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. So at the very least, if pastors and, and preachers want to apply this to 2,000 years ago, they still they can't go back further than that. So even if you take this all the way back to Christ's death and resurrection and the blood of the lamb and people having the testimony of Christ, Satan is there accusing them before God. Yet those who were cast out in chains of everlasting darkness and everything else and are supposed to be here, obviously not. Just like when we go to um, Luke chapter 4. When we go to Luke in order and we know the prophetic insight of Luke in the end of days and we go to Luke 4, we see that Satan says all of these things were given to him in a moment of time. So he's given, it, it's a prophetic picture. Satan didn't have everything, but at mid-trumpets, everything is given over to Satan. All of the Lord's people are now flying away on the wings of an eagle, which is the same time as this, when Satan is given that short time. So again, Satan may be able to come down and in spirit and have all this testing and stuff going on, but he's not kicked out of heaven yet. He hasn't been quote-unquote cast down. Lucifer has. And we see then in Revelation uh, 12, 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe. This is a picture of our first woe at the fifth trumpet. Woe to the inhabitants, the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. A short time is in 13,000 years. A short time, even people, if they believe 7,000 years, it's not all the way 6,000 years ago. That's not a short time. That would be all of human history that he has had down here to wreak havoc on absolutely everything. And has he been able to? No. Because this is prophecy. This is speaking about the end of days. What is the short time that he has? Well, we know exactly what that answer is. We go to Daniel chapter 12. And in Daniel chapter 12, verse 7, it says, And I heard a man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and left hand into heaven, and swear unto him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. There's no and here, as you've heard me teach many times, which means one, two, plus a half. Satan's time is two and a half years where he has complete, everything has been given to him in a moment of time, like Luke 4, and it's all been him. And he wreaks havoc on the earth. Messiah is cut off after the rebuilding and everything is done. And we see that he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished. When is this finishing happening? All we do is go back to Revelation, go to chapter 10. And in chapter 10, we know when it's finished. It says, in verse 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound. So the soon as the seventh trumpet sounds, the mystery of God should be finished. Because the Lord is returning at that point feet down. Which means he had the first woe and the second woe, and that it lasted two and a half years, which is two and a half of the final three and a half years of tribulation. So... Satan's time is only two and a half years. And 
we know again in going into this when we go into um um revelation 17 this is where people get confused because when you believe that that lucifer is satan and satan is lucifer one you've missed the fact that lucifer is a cherubim and the cherubim and i'm, I'm not going to go into all of this detail yet but when you see that he was the most beautiful he was he was arrayed in all of the 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 gems and all of these stuff all of these things he was something also connected to what we know in the end of days that I'll get into in the next video but we know from Isaiah that he was a cherubim and we know that seraphim cherubim are around Jesus's throne and the seraphim are around the father's throne so when you go read what a seraphim is, and it means copper and serpent-like, you know that Satan was around the Father's throne, and Satan is the one that wants to take away and usurp everything of the Father's by giving Lucifer, his guy, his second in command, who's around Jesus' throne, who is the beast antichrist type. He's trying to do an exact mimic of what the Father and Son are doing. He's when when Satan is cast down and the pit is opened at the fifth trumpet, we know Lucifer, who was the one as the beast that it says in verse eight, the beast that thou saw that thou saw was because we know in the second half of seals, he's here and it's the mark of the beast and all that other stuff. And that he is not because when the Lord comes on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of the sixth seal, the, the beast is killed, which is Lucifer. And that system, and he's not going to be there for the first half, the last year of seals, and the first half of trumpets. And then it says, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Which means he's coming back at mid-trumpets. How does he come back from the pit? Satan's been cast down. Satan's been cast down. The pit is opened. And what does he do? Is it Satan that goes in and declares himself to be God? No. Satan is giving the power to Lucifer, his second in command, to go in and he's going to declare himself God. Well, isn't that funny? Isn't that exactly the contradiction to the father and the son? The exact opposite where he's trying to usurp it all? Where Christ is going to be given everything? Satan's trying to give everything to his buddy Lucifer? It's not, it's not Satan going into the throne in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's the beast who's Lucifer. And so this is what's really interesting as well, that we know through the power of the air and everything else. This is something I've been talking about with my wife over the last week. We mentioned it a little bit at the beginning with AI. And there's so many people that they'll see the, the, the things that will be good from AI. And then there are those that are warning against the devastations of AI. And of course, there's some things that could be used and could be beneficial. But of course, there's a lot more wickedness because the chart on AI goes like this. And then soon as they get general AI, which they believe will happen in the next few months this year, it's claimed they already have it, but they haven't released it to the public. And when they get it and you've got general AI, it doesn't continue like this. It goes straight up because it'll be infinitely learning from itself and over and over from itself, that it would be multiple times, guess what? Smarter than every human combined on earth. Huh, that sounds familiar. Where do we get our info? How do we connect? Through the air. AI, the internet, all information is being grabbed. Right now, it's floating around our heads. It's all over the place in the air if we know how to take that info and catch it and, and decipher it. That's what that's how we can do things with our phones, internet and everything else. So what is it trying to do? Well, if you listen to some of these these people teach and give talks on AI and and the things of general AI. Well, everybody's talking about what? Well, first of all, there's a lot of jobs, millions and tens of millions of jobs that will be lost. And what will happen? They'll have to give a universal basic income because a lot of those jobs won't come back. But people will say, well, there'll be more creative jobs. You'll be able to go do the things that you want to do. And then what happens? As it continues to grow and get more and more powerful, 
those on the on the good side of things, you know what they say? They say within 20 years, less than that, some this one guy, Ray Kurzweil, who's been in AI for 60 years at the beginning. And he's been a futurist on many things. He even knew that by mid 90s, mid to late 90s, the internet and the the computers in all homes and the internet would begin to take off. He just didn't know which company was going to be victorious. But he knew and he he told it back in the, I think it was 60s or 70s. He knew it was coming by the mid 90s. And so he's a very sought after guy in this field. Well, he says, and he's been saying for all these years that it'll be 2029. That in 2029, guess what? They say with this technology and with what AI will learn because it'll learn everything and then multiply its learning beyond every human combined that it now, there's a room where there's a robot and there's more places than one, but I've seen one in videos and it's in a bulletproof, shatterproof room and they give it all of the elements of the element table and other components and it's creating it's created now another 20,000 elements that weren't known before. And so what it what he's believed and what many others believe is that by 2029, they'll be able to heal all diseases. Hello. That we'll be able to now live longer. And that the, that the issue and the worry is, is that, of course, the elites would have it at the highest levels and most people wouldn't be able to get it. But within this technology... They say people will now be able to live again hundreds of years. Hmm. Sounds familiar, right? What else can they do with it? They believe within 20 years that not only by that point will people have full access to be able to live for hundreds of years again because of regeneration in the cell and all the things that they can do with this, but that it will be a utopia where the machines will do the work that is so mundane that nobody wants to do and that people will be free to enjoy the things of life that they were meant to enjoy because they would create what? This type of utopia, this, this world of flourishing where they'll be able to build underground even and have all the farmland and stuff underground. And we can go and populate even more places of the earth and live in peace because everybody will have access to the same understanding and the same level of technology. Well, sound familiar? It's an absolute copy that man with machine and through AI, which is the prince of the air through which all of this is coming, who is trying to do the exact thing scriptures told us is coming through our Lord and Savior. He's trying. It's an absolute mimic, a carbon copy of the opposite through man doing it with the enemy to fulfill what the Lord said he would do himself. And guess what? All of it is this year. All of it is being released this year. Chat GPT, it wasn't released by mistake. It wasn't released by mistake last year. It had to be released so that it can be now out in the internet. So that it can learn and decipher absolutely everything from everything everybody inputs of everything always and forever and be released on the internet and multiply its learning and the things that we don't know, it can learn and then decipher and solve those issues. That was just the first iteration. When they, you know, they brought out 0.5 and 5 is coming and all these other parts, then they'll also be releasing the general artificial intelligence which when that happens, it's supposed to be this year. And they, they said seven months about a month ago. How fitting, about seven months from now. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you, think, do you think that what's taking place is, and I, I pondered this. Now, I know it's not going to happen like this, but I've actually pondered where, where is it possible that the Lord is having man and allowing, and man is doing these things, and that's how the Lord is going to bring about people living hundreds of years again? Is that how the Lord is going to do these things so that we have the utopia and the millennial reign? Or is it the enemy who is usurping it all and trying to do it his way to usurp what the Father and Son are doing? Obviously, that's what it is. That is what's happening. 
And it's all happening where it's all culminating this year. So you got Israel and, and Iran. You've got you've got Russia and you've got what's going on to stop uh, with Ukraine from joining. You've got all of these things taking place. You've got the year count of the 14 years all the way from Christ to the Jubilee. You've got the general AI that is to be released this year. And all of these things that they're planning that are forecasted and have been understood for years that are about to be released in what I've been calling the everything, everywhere, all at once for the past few years, this is the year that it happens. So this should be another thing that can excite us, that can strengthen us to say that if this is happening in the world and these things are happening this year and we're what, five years from what they're expecting for for lengthening life and all of these other things. And it'll be a, a universal basic income within the next two to three years at most because of what's being released. It's just, it's just more understanding for us to say, man, we're here. Get ready. So now I have two questions. <laughs> sure. Just, just go back to Satan tempted Jesus. That was prophecy in scripture. Is that what you were saying? Oh, no, you could say that. Yeah. You, it happened. Okay, okay. Was it in the was? Or is it was? It, it in happened in the is, yes. So, you're like in Luke chapter 4. So, when Satan, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, you got to remember, Satan can come down, right? Satan can still do things, but Satan's still able to go up into the throne, or go to, into, into heaven to stand before God. And so, he can then accuse. He can what? Yeah, and so that he can accuse, yeah. So he can still do that now. Yes. Right now. right now. Right now, Satan is in heaven and he's accusing the brethren right now. Oh and he'll God. continue to do it to mid trumpets. But Lucifer was the one who was cast down, who had fallen with all the brightness of everything that he had and everything. He was the most beautiful and everything else. And so when you hear about people talking about tribulation and talking about the Antichrist, they'll often say, uh, it's Satan because they'll say Satan and Lucifer are the same thing. But what what do you hear many prophecy teachers over the decades say that Lucifer uh, say that the beast, the Antichrist will be? They say that he'll probably be a really handsome, good looking guy, right? Okay, now you just equated beast and Antichrist together when you did before it was beast and Lucifer. So that's how say that again. You just equated the beast with Antichrist as Antichrist. And also as Lucifer. So I, that's where I start getting confused when you equate it with Lucifer as a beast and Antichrist as a beast. Yeah, they're all the same. Anything? It's all the same. Yeah. yeah, Catherine, if you just have a look in your box there, I send a summary of uh, the uh, the Antichrist Trinity sort of thing. Mimics, Satan mimics the Trinity. There's a, a little um, short summary. Should it be helpful? I'll put it in the bottom of um, the video when it's finished. Who's talking? That's Mark. Oh, thanks, Mark. Okay, Alan, I think I got what I need, but one more thing that I want to say before we go tonight is if this is coming to fruition this year, the scripture says that there would not be one left to say in the end if it was time was not shortened. You know that scripture, right? Uh, yeah, if it wasn't shortened. You find it in Mark and in Matthew, yeah. So don't you think that you are dead right on target with this year because you can't, we're not going to be able to last much longer with all this AI stuff. Yeah, yeah. You see, I and mean, think about that. Even if, even if the 70 year thing and the, the tree thing and the five years after the, you thought it was the 70, there's not much, there's not much left to real. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know. In, in different generations of time, people have always had that belief, of course. But yeah. there wasn't a generation that hid Israel back in the land, and they didn't have the revelation of Scripture. So they, you see, in every generation, only so much more is released, only so much more is given, only so much more is given. And here we are in the last generation, and there's a group of people being revealed the open books for the end of days. So that's also another thing where you can say, well, Okay, if you get this revelation, what we're going to go to the end of my life and it'll be another generation. No, you see, you, you apply this and then you apply to what we see going on in the world. 
where we've got communication all over the world. We've got a system now where there's machines are going to be greater than humans in their understanding and and multiplied by every human on earth beyond all of their understanding. And you say, well, exactly what you're saying. How could this being released this year, how on earth could this continue on for much longer? And you have to start all over from the beginning and do the whole thing all over again. You, you, that's it. You'd be like, well, and, and that's why I was talking about what I did because, you know, when you contemplate these things and you say, well, you, when you when you listen to these guys in it that are like in these businesses and involved directly with these AI things and and you hear what they say, you say, well, wait a second. That sounds very biblical. It sounds very much like what the Lord they'll, they'll live for hundreds of years again. It's going to be a utopia that will come out of it at the end and everybody will live in peace and harmony. It, it, they're they're taking it from the book yet most of them don't realize they're taking it from the book and they're building it out thinking that this is what will come from it so if that's what they're building and they're releasing the main piece of that this year that will help grow that exponentially and that these are the things within the next three to five or two to five years <clears throat> that they're going to be able to do let alone all the things they're going to be able to start doing before we how how much closer do we have to be you know so when you go but when in specific when we go to the scriptures about you know the the days being shortened that only is found in mark and in matthew uh it's not found in luke's discourse and we know the one that's found in marks is related to the mark of the beast right so it says in those uh, uh, verse 20, and except those days had been shortened, those days uh, shortened those days. Sorry, except the Lord had shortened those days. No, uh, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Most people read these. And of course, because they only go to Matthew, they think Mark is just saying the same thing for the same time frame. This isn't something for now. Although I understand what you're saying in looking at everything, we could say, man, if it doesn't happen this year, when we see everything scri connected scripturally, when we see everything uh, connected in year counts for Jubilees and, and in the sun, moon and stars and uh, from September 2017 and, and, and all of these things and historical records and the Shroud of Turin, the coins, all of these things. And we add that to the picture. It seems like absolutely this is the year. But when we get to this in Mark, we know that this is talking about the point when Antichrist is now on the scene and gets his 42 months. This is the point when the Antichrist, who is the beast, which is also Lucifer, which is why I was saying when people talk about the Antichrist, that you'll hear many prophecy teachers say that the Antichrist is going to be some really beautiful, super good looking guy. Well, I believe that that's true, too. First of all, if it was just some regular guy looking person or some ugly person, it's a lot more difficult to get everybody on their side. But the better looking they are, the more prone people are to listen to them. And that, I mean, it goes, it happens all over the world. So when you apply that thought, as many prophecy teachers have also taught over the years, who does that apply to? Does that apply to Satan or does that apply to Lucifer? It applies to Lucifer. Lucifer was the most beautiful covering cherub and everything else, the most beautiful there was. So when prophecy teachers talk on it, they describe Lucifer, but then they'll call him Satan, but it's not Satan. It's Lucifer because it's Lucifer who was cast down. <laughs> Satan hasn't lost his battle yet. And so when we're seeing this portion here, we know it's about the Antichrist. This, this shortening of days has to do with the time of the mark of the beast which means if the lord <laughs> listen to what it says except the lord had shortened those days what does that mean that means if he hadn't stopped it from continuing that's what he's saying if i didn't stop it from continuing there would be no flesh left to save which means if i didn't intercede 
after a certain point that he was allowed to do this, there would be nobody left to save because all Christians would have been killed, hunted down, killed, beheaded, and everybody else would have taken the mark of the beast. So we know Lucifer here, the beast, the Antichrist, is given X amount of time before the Lord steps in to shorten those days because if he didn't step in and it continued, there would have been nobody left to save. So that's what's going on. And what was I? Oh, with Lucifer. Let me show you something else. Hey, if Al. we go in. Uh, hey, Roy. Hey. How you doing, brother? Hey, hey, brother. I'm just going to bid you an adieu. I just uh, I say good night to everyone here. I just want to just pop off. I have to get up in like five hours. So. <laughs> okay, brother. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for jumping have a good in. Good night. You yeah, too. Take care. Yeah, bye, bye. bye. So, in the other part in relation to Satan, let me show you this in Zechariah. So now we see it, we saw it in the New Testament, and we saw where Satan is still accusing till mid-trumpets when he's finally cast down. We also see in Zechariah chapter 3, which we know is prophetic as well, but this is, all, this is happening in heaven. So here we are in Zechariah 3 for the events that were happening in those days, even though we know it's also a prophetic picture, we know it also happened with Joshua the high priest, even though we know it's a Yeshua high priest of the end, this is happening in heaven. So if Satan was cast down, how is this happening? Uh, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at the right hand to resist him. And the Lord, which is the Father, said to Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord hath chosen Jerusalem, who hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. So here's Satan again in heaven, being rebuked, who's standing on the on the right side of Joshua, who's a picture of Jesus as high priest, and Satan's there is trying to, to speak stuff against him. Again, if Satan was the one who was cast down, what is he doing always in heaven? trying to speak against us and speak against Jesus and against Jesus' people all the time. It's because it wasn't Satan who was cast down. Sure, Satan can come down and, and was tempting Jesus in the spirit, but Satan is still going to heaven and always doing this accusing. Lucifer isn't. Lucifer's been cast down. He was the one cast down at the beginning. He was the one who deceived everybody in the light creation. In those days of creation of males and females, it was Lucifer with whoever his right hand guy is, which is the false prophet in the end of days. So all of all of the stuff taking place during seals <clears throat> in relation to the beast Antichrist is Lucifer. It's all Lucifer, but he's being empowered by his guy who is Satan. And then when Satan is cast out at mid trumpets, the pit is opened. Lucifer comes back and now he's there and he sits on the throne and he proclaims himself to be God. And it is Satan who gave him that power and that authority. And that's why we see all three of them there in Revelation chapter 16 in relation to the bulls. This is how we know the bulls are at the very end of, tri of tribulation in the 14 years, not at the end of the millennium. Because we see in verse 13 of Revelation 16, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, see, which tells you what? Which means their spirit is going to indwell these people. They're not going to, you know, there are, they're going to be physical people, but they're going to indwell whoever these people are. Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, that's Satan, come out of the mouth of the beast, that's Lucifer, and come out of the mouth of the false prophet. And we know the false prophet is also a beast. And we know this from Revelation chapter 13. We see that the first beast who is the who is the Lucifer beast is the one out of the sea. And if you remember, we did a teaching on this in Ezekiel 28. This we have the, the whole conversation about Lucifer and, and his brightness and how he was so glorified and shining bright and all the beauty that he had. 
And what did it say about him? It said that, look at this. It said, uh, da, 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 let's read verse two. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and now hath said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. You see, when we see this and we see another place where it talks about it, and this is all about Lucifer and the and the 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 embodiment of the person that he's going to take. We know that he was the anointed cherub, which is Lucifer. And it talked about him saying that he's sitting in the midst of the sea. When we go to Revelation 13, we know that this typology of Lucifer is the is the Leviathan character. And the Leviathan comes up from the sea. And Lucifer is going to be claiming things as the one out of the sea. But then we come down here to the second beast. And it says, and another beast coming up out of the earth. This is Bohemoth. And Bohemoth, we know, is the false prophet. It talks about, you know, he has all the power in the, in the, in the presence of the first beast. He has people take the mark and worship the first beast. And we know that this is the false prophet, that this second beast out of the earth, who is Bohemoth, is the false prophet. And we know this by going to Revelation 19. When we see at the at the great wine press battle, when the Lord comes at the end of the, at the 14th year, we see there's a grave shark, uh, the wine treading the wine press of the wrath of God. And then we come down at Revelation 19, 19, and I saw the beast who is Lucifer, who is Leviathan out of the sea, and the kings of the earth. And their enemies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And in verse 20, and the beast, again, Lucifer, Leviathan, out of the sea. If you go to the description of the bottomless pit, it's the abyss. Hello. So we have the beast was taken and with him the false prophet. Well, why doesn't it just call him the second beast? Why does it call him the false prophet just like it did? You know, in Revelation 16, it said the third one is the false prophet. Well, we know that the false prophet is that second beast out of the out of the earth. It says that brought miracles before him. So we know the false prophet is the second beast because the second beast out of the earth, who is the false prophet, Revelation 13 told us that in the presence of the first beast, he can do miracles before him with which he deceived that them that had received the mark of the beast and worshiped his image. So you know that the false prophet is that second beast out of the earth in Revelation 13. So we've got one who is out of the sea, and Leviathan is out of the sea. We have, and it's Lucifer. We have the false prophet who we're told is the one, is the second beast who is out of the earth, and out of the earth is Bohemoth. So you've got Lucifer and you've got whoever his sidekick is, who Bohemoth was. I don't know who that was, but he is the copy, the not the copy, the, the imitation of the Holy Ghost. So you've got the beast as Lucifer, who was a cherub around the Lord Jesus's throne, who fell, who was the most beautiful and brightest of them all, who fell, who is the Antichrist, coming against Christ's people to take over his position. And he's got his quote unquote, Holy Spirit, this false prophet imitator of the Holy Ghost. And the two of them were together. I even the creation of on the fifth day, as we read from second Esdras or second Baruch, second Baruch. And it said that it was Bohemoth and Leviathan. And we've got them, of course, with great detail that I'll go into in the next video about Job chapter 40 and 41, I think even into 42, but 40 and 41 with great detail about Bohemoth and Leviathan. And even this double bridle that's in the mouth of the beast, the one who we know is the beast, who is Leviathan, a double bridle. Isn't that fitting? Because we know he's got two portions of time. He's got the end of seals. Then he's killed. Then he comes back at mid-trumpets. 
when the pit is opened, and now all three of them are there again. There's no way that all three of them can be there again if the beast had been killed at the end of Seals unless the pit is open and he comes back from the abyss because he is the one from the sea. It's craziness. It's so awesome. It's so incredible to follow and to be able to track the next video on that. We'll go really into depth in it and uh, we'll, we'll help clarify that for you even more. But the, the essential overall of that is that, yes, Satan is still up there accusing us and he's up there until mid trumpets and then he has but a short time. And that's why you see Satan is I mean, Lucifer is really bad, obviously, but but Satan, he is the worst of the worst. He is the absolute worst of the worst. That's why in the discourses we see that in Marks, it says it'll be a time worse than it was since the foundation of the earth until this time. We go to Matthew's discourse and Matthew says, now at this point will be worse than it ever was ever in all of human history. And then it says, nor shall ever be after. <laughs> Why? Because those final two and a half years, <laughs> excuse me, of the 13, the final two and a half of the 13 is when Satan himself is here indwelt in somebody and it'll be the worst time <clears throat> that could ever be imagined in all of human history. Even worse than when it was just Lucifer and his sidekick, when all three of them are here at mid-trumpets. That's why there, there's essentially there's nobody left. There's a few people that survive and then give praise to the Lord at the end of the 13th year. Because that final two and a half years is, I, I can't even picture. I mean, they're going to be eating people and stuff again. I mean, it's going to be insanity. Thank you. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello, yeah. Damien. <clears throat> Where's your volume? Oh, here, give me a sec. I can unmute you. There you can go. You there he is. My bad, bro. I was cooking and trying to get all my stuff done before I jumped on. I started listening, like, after you started it, though. I caught the part where y'all were talking about the April 8th stuff, and he's like, no, one, no one's even on here to talk about it. It's like, yeah, bro, I'm yeah. trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> so what are what are some things? I know you you wanted to talk about it. I know you understand what we understand. I know you're uh, you're very, very uh, uh, in line and very well studied on these things. So yeah. what is it that you're seeing uh, with uh, the April 8th? Um, so there was... There, there was a few things, but one of the main things that I just recently heard, my mom was telling me about it, but I looked it up again. Um, it passes over seven cities named Nineveh. I did, you know, I did hear about that and I looked it up and I found none. Well, the, the, so this one, the website that I found, I'll send you the link of it. It's uh, Texas, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and New York are the seven. And then he said there's an eighth one in uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Yeah, and I think I think I found I ended up finding one that it ends up skimming through. But when I remember, yeah, I saw that somebody had posted a video where somebody was talking about it passing through, I think, seven. And yeah. I just, you know, I just accepted it. And then I went to look for it because I thought, man, if that's it, then that's, you know, that might help really with some significance. Yeah. But I couldn't find it. That It showed all the cities and it only showed one Nineveh at the end. Yeah, I'll send you the deal that I, I just um, my mom was just now telling me about it before I got on. And because okay. I was she's been, uh, you know, following a lot of that stuff. That's where I hear some, most of this stuff. But, you yeah. know, she shows me some stuff. I'll look into it and everything. But yeah. um, they're talking about also that the three patterns from the previous American solar eclipses, they match the same one like during the American Revolution, the Civil War and the Vietnam War. Mm hmm. And it was like the same uh, patterns as this one. And then we already, y'all already talked about the devil's comment that was passing through that you'll be mm -hmm. able to see whenever it's happening, which that's pretty wild. That yeah. we'll be able to, because I don't even know if that's ever even happened during a solar eclipse. Yeah. You'll be able to see a we, comet at the same time yeah. like that. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. The uh, guy in uh, the, the video I posted, I mean, the little clip that I played, he talks about also in it. That's why I recommend people go watch themselves as well. 
he ends up, he talks about uh, that the Lord had showed him that 2024 is war. So, okay. you know, even where we understand things to happen, we know it means war. Yeah. Um, but I was, this is something I was thinking too, as you're saying, you know, the the civil war and all these alignments and things that have happened in history. I, I've often wondered, you know, in the, the 2010 video that we have where they know their plan, but they just haven't been able to make yeah. it happen. We know that they've been trying to get the war with Israel first. And what they've been trying to do is it won't be so much. Now, what we know prophetically, what we've understood prophetically is that when the 50 days begin, so the pre-trib happens and the 50 days start, that Haifa and Tel Aviv are destroyed. But what happens before that? Is it possible that between now and the time that we've understood when Haifa and Tel Aviv are attacked and destroyed, is it possible that between now and then the war happening in Israel, he he Netanyahu really increased? I mean, he's got a plan for what he's doing. Is it yeah. possible that they attack Iran? Because in that 2010 video, they've been doing things to provoke Israel to attack Iran. They they don't want Iran to attack first. They want Israel to attack. So even though, yeah, Iran did it through proxies, the actual Iran itself, they want Iran to be attacked by Israel so that the world can then say, ah, no, see, Iran doing this is good for Iran, like everybody's doing now. You know, yeah. everybody's coming against Israel. So I think they've tried yeah. to provoke this as well. So is it possible that between April and and the August time frame, that we do see more war, that we see something really significant happen beforehand. And now I'm not so sure something American, but what we know Israeli wise, it may be that there's something closer to August, maybe not April, but closer to August, where Israel is going after Iran before that 50 day marker where the first attack of Haifa and Tel Aviv's destruction happens. You see, I don't think it'll just be, oh, Haifa and Tel Aviv are attacked and they're destroyed. Yeah. You know, we already yeah. see what's yeah. building up. Yeah. Yeah, all this tit for tat and everything that's building up now. So might there be something even greater of of a real um, attack type of thing with Israel going after Iran where there's even a greater not full on, but kind of before yeah. that attack. So we can definitely see some more serious war stuff before what I would call the official beginning of, of the end of days. And we know that it'll be escape and then Haifa Tel Aviv, you know, within probably within a day of each other, within hours. Yeah. So what before it, you know, is there going to be something America wise? Is there, you know, is this alignment with the X really talking about something coming to America? Here's the thing. What we can understand on it that from what we know prophetically is when the end of day starts, it starts with the pre-trip. And Ooh. then it's high fun Tel Aviv. Scripture is laid it out. I mean, that that part we know. But what can happen before? Do I think, yeah. you know, a, a nuke drops on on America, you know, on the X marks the spot? I, I don't think so. Yeah, but I don't really could there be civil war? Could there be a major earthquake? It, that That's right? the number seven on this. The Where the X crosses, it's on the uh, Madrid fault line. Yeah. And that's right where the X crosses that. So maybe like an earthquake or a natural disaster, yeah. something like that. You know, and that thing. could be it too. That could be something. And those are the types of things that I'm looking for. My my point in it. Good night, Jenna. I heard, night. Was, I heard, I heard the town was called Little Egypt. Yes, I remember uh, that from uh, the first yeah. one, right? Because people, when September 20, uh, 2017 happened, uh, people knew that there was a one coming in 2024. And so they had already made that X and they knew that it was in that place called little egypt, little egypt which again is i agree significant as being you know a modern egypt a modern world you know type of thing with america um my my main my main point in it is yeah things can happen before but in relation to the end of days yeah. i don't believe it happens until the 
free trip in the 50 days. Yep. I don't think that whatever this is, even though it could be something, it could be an earthquake, it could be, you know, like the Civil War movie that's coming and and, yeah. and things really start to go crazy. Because, of course, we know they want to stop Trump. We know there isn't going to be an election in 2024 with with the, the time frame of the understanding that we have. So could they bring about these things to prevent what's coming and to stop what they think will be to stop the election and cause more of this chaos? Absolutely. But I don't believe it's the start of yeah, the official I, time of tribulation. That's 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 the way I see it. That's I'm right there with you. Scripture Scripture has laid that out the last four or five years for us. I'm solid on that. I just it's definitely uh signs not only not I don't think it's really mainly signs for us, it's more signs for like the world in yeah. general. Hey, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Maybe y'all should start waking up. Cause like in 2017, I know a lot of people spiritually, when they saw that, that's like me too. I was yeah. like, there's a lot of weird things going on. Let me reevaluate my lifestyle. Yeah. And well, but surely got me here. And that's kind of what I thought with this, uh, solar eclipse this time and with it being like seven years from the first one it's like yeah. hey the first seven year race is pretty much done this is the second flag for this for the next seven group and that's kind of yeah. like the sign in the sky like hey better get ready better start waking up because it's fixing yeah. to get very yeah great point so you see the, you see how what you've done you've just kind of combined the the two points as well right kind of what i was talking about earlier so we had our warning seven year warning and then mm -hmm. you've got their warning happening now for what's coming for them in seven years. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's it's that type of warning. However, those people probably don't realize at all that that's their warning. Right. Yep. But for the Watchmen community, not only understanding what we know, but just Watchmen in general. They're watching this because they're understanding there's some sort of sign coming out of this. Right. There's something to be aware of. Yeah. And so for the Watchmen they're always on it and always paying a lot of attention to these things. So there's probably a reason for that too, right? Especially yeah. being it so important since the last one, uh, the most important in 2017, this yeah. is, like I Definitely. was saying earlier, this is the, the biggest attraction since then. So there, there's probably some significance, one for the community, and maybe it'll wake up more people and get them ready in this final months of preparation where they, they won't fall away maybe so much. You know, it's kind of like 2017. A bunch of people woke up, millions, tens of millions of people started waking up. And then a whole bunch of them, vast majority, yeah. started going back to sleep. LOA, so hopefully yeah. this one, it's bringing some of them back, at least some of them, saying, hey, yeah, there really is. Like, this is really intense. A lot of you guys are talking about this. Yeah. And then when, if something doesn't happen, then a lot of them will leave. But again, you'll have more that will have stayed. So you'll have more people prepared again. If something happens, then you'll definitely, almost like you're saying, you know, this this wake up call to those that are maybe on the edge or wondering what's going on and all this craziness with a lot, which is what a lot of people are talking about now. Yep. You know, so much craziness with Biden's incapacity and and just this constant attack on Trump yeah. and and wars around the world and the border. I mean, that border, man, it's so crystal clear yeah. what's going on. It's incredible. So yeah. all of this together, kind of is pushing people to keep asking. So an event of some sort connected to this sign, yeah, that that would make sense that it could help push people over the edge to say, that all right, Lord, great... what are you trying to tell me? Yeah. What's that, Catherine? That was a great connection. I mean, that sensed it for me. So this sign, mm -hmm. that sign you were talking about way earlier, he really sensed it right there. Yeah. You. So what else you got, Damien? Oh, that I think that was pretty much all the uh, all the other things I really kind of talked about. Um, oh, do you have um? Are you able to send me the link here in the Zoom? Um, do you, yeah. Do you have it on hand, maybe. It's okay yeah. if you don't. We can you can post it in the forum. Okay. Yeah, even if it's yeah, I'll, later. I'll I'll post it in there because I also want to before. I mean, I want to double check and read it. You know, I mean, I I just kind of skim through it, seeing the names, seeing what he was talking about try to find some other stuff, but I was trying to hurry up and jump on too. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. So check that out. And if you do find it posted in the forum, maybe even message me with it as well. So I can look at it because what I did is when I first saw it, I just accepted it because it was uh, just another, it was another, uh, uh watchman. So yeah. I figured, yeah, I just, I believed it. And when I went to go look, I was on, um, I think I was on, 
datetime.com. I think I was on that one. I might have been on weather or something else. Uh, maybe space.com. Oh, and yeah. When I, was, when I was looking and it showed the path and it listed out all the cities it went through, I think I saw one that was Nineveh, but there was, there was no seven or eight Ninevehs. And so yeah. that's Check. that's why I didn't end up talking on it. Otherwise, definitely I would have. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, have a look too and see. You know, because one of the other things is knowing where the path is. If we can just know where the path is, they may have purposely left out all these Ninevehs so people don't yeah. get too excited, right? So just I haven't gone path. myself to look on the path to see if there's actually Ninevehs there. Yeah. It's supposed to come in when it enters through Texas. It comes in at Eagle Pass. Oh, all okay. that going on. Yeah, like, yeah. The center focal point of everything, that's where it's supposed to start coming in, so... That was another thing on there. So I don't know, man. There's a lot of signs. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm sticking to scripture. I'm sticking to what yeah. we've been shown because that's the stuff that I trust. Yeah. One hundred without a doubt. That's where my comfort's in. It's the yeah. scripture. You're standing in the scripture and the word. That's right. It's awesome to see signs and stuff like that, but still scriptural. Yeah. And you know, and I I agree exactly with what you said. And could something though happen from this? Absolutely something can. Um, but not what many others are thinking it means. Yeah. Um, but most likely, whatever it will be, it's another even even it'll probably be, you know, in the sense of whatever it is, would be a greater thing than Revelation 12. Now, Revelation 12 as the sign got a lot of people looking. Now, yeah. I don't think just as a as a thought, I don't think that this is so much as a sign just to look at. But that it must be, I would think that if it is some sort of warning sign, that it maybe should be bigger, meaning yeah. an event, something attached to it that would really push people to a, to a repentance. Because just another sign and people saying, yeah, I remember another sign over there. But then this yeah. time, bang, something happening that would be enough chaos to get people to say, Lord, Lord, please, you know, that yeah. would appear to make they more could sense. Deny it being attached to the sign. Yeah, like, exactly. Whatever. But if not, it's just, it'll come and go within a week. People will talk about it and be like, oh, yeah, the eclipse, another eclipse. Yeah. But yeah. That's right. So it would have to happen. Or, or uh, you know, uh, an earthquake or something major with it, then that's a different story. Exactly. Yeah. I'm in full agreement. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Plays out. Lord willing. Let me see. Uh, there's something here in the chat. Tammy says. The video, 28 second mark. Oh, 28 second video. Here, I'll, I'll share this in the Zoom. But again, this is... About this that is <clears throat> yeah, this, this is exactly the type of thing we were talking about. Where it's, it, it's fine to just post a video and say... Look at what somebody's found. It's Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Yeah. But it's another thing to really know, is it really Nineveh, right? Yeah. And it's you, the you, same you, thing we do with scripture. People have told us it's this, this, this all of our lives. And then all of a sudden scripture opens to us and we could see it and we can understand it. And while the rest of them still want to keep saying it's this, 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 we can show with scripture. Here's what it really says, right? And so that's, think that's Aaron, what I'm getting at, what we really want to do with this. I, th I think Aaron, I've got a minute, did a bit, a bit more of a detailed one. He also did like an 80 pin chart thing across the line there. Okay. So, yeah, this is, well, I won't play it, but it's only 28 seconds. So, this guy's probably just saying, here's eight Ninevehs. But, okay. Yeah. No, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not against it. I, when I looked, I couldn't find it. But what I didn't do is I didn't go even greater detail to look everywhere it passed to see if it was. So if there is that, then yeah, another another uh, yeah. warning shot to say, hey, something's going on here. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna look it up and see. But either way, like I said, these are just signs. These are just little things here and there. Like my main focus is on scripture, so yeah. I'm yeah. good either way. I hear you, brother. Oh, well, well, that was a good video. That was good. Yeah, everybody, we kind of got some questions. Brought some more things to, to light. More things will come with the next video. We yeah. covered uh, some of the understanding, so everybody's aware that there's a, a fancy 
follow along chart for everybody to to look into and study. Um, talked about the meeting tomorrow and then doing a live show next Monday. So, um, yeah, I think we pretty much covered it. Everybody's good. Mark gave a thumbs up. All right. Well, with that, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining. I'm grateful that uh, everybody jumped on. Um, hopefully, you know, I, I, I always like doing these. We don't do them too often, yeah. but maybe every couple months. And uh, I think it's a great thing. People can ask those questions more directly and we can ponder these things together and jump here and jump there and, you know, just spend some time sharing and going doing a little bit of back and forth. So with that, God bless you all. God bless your families. And we will talk to you all very soon. Good night. Bye for now, guys. Good night. God bless.